Welcome back to the Capes and Tights podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. We're back with another guest, comic book creator, Steve Mardo from New England. He is the artist on Epic Tavern, Tales from the Fantastical Crime Unit. Uh, it's a book that came out on Black Caravan, the imprint over at Scout Comics. That's uh, Joseph Schmalky's imprint and Rick, Rich, uh, Rich Woodall's, the co-publishers of that uh, imprint. Uh, but he's, it's a one-shot based on the video game Epic Tavern, available over at Steam in beta. Uh, so we talked comics, we talked cons, we talked a bunch of random stuff, but mainly we talked artwork and comic books that Steve is part of. So check this out. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook and on Twitter and visit capesandtights.com for a bunch of new content, articles, podcasts, reviews, all kinds of stuff over there at capesandtights.com. Uh, this is episode with a Steve Mardo, comic book creator from New England. Thanks everybody for listening. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast here, Steve. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm I'm great, man. I you know what? It's funny, it's like I realized that there's a lot of artists named Steve out there, or at least that I know of, you know, Steve, you know, Steve Levine, this New England based artist. But <laughs> I was laughing laughing last night. I was watching the replay of um Kevin Smith's um panel at Comic Con in San Diego, and I stumbled upon it. I was literally playing Baby Shark for my son on youtube on the tv that, and that curse and it, it, you know someone's actually created one that's like a hundred hours or something like that yeah of, oh, it's in a row. yeah that's like the most you know it's like the most genius thing and the most lazy laziest laziest parenting uh the, tactic i've ever the heard. thing is though if it's on the screen and he just sees the corner the fin of a baby shark and he knows exactly what it is and he's pointing and he's screaming so i just scroll down on the youtube app on the tv to a different thing and what pops up and starts auto playing is kevin smith's panel and it was funny he was like uh isn't, 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 isn't wait not to interrupt but isn't that yeah. weird like how you have like stuff like that and then you have like uh uh you know the uh, worst kills in saw yes compilation <laughs> and it's like next to it it's baby yeah, it's right next Matt. to it so you're like okay or someone has done that and put the worst kills in saw to the baby shark music yeah yeah it's <laughs> But he was laughing because he goes, Kevin Smith was the not the most famous and most popular Kevin on that that stage that day because Kevin Feige was the panel before him. And I was Ooh. laughing about how famous mu movie makers are named Kevin. And I'm like, wait, is there that many? It just happened to be that they were in panels next to each other. <laughs> and you just like but, Wikipedia yeah. and just like ID Kevin this, Kevin that. But, Kevins, people named Kevin. I'll tell you what, Kevin uh, Smith is one of those guys that's just like loving life. He's yeah. just loving life. We did, we did, a, um, so, um, I do, uh, uh, I'm a regular artist for uh, a gallery out in Los Angeles, pop culture gallery called 1988. And, uh, he, he's a frequent, uh, patron of there. And we did a mall rats show mm -hmm. and, uh, it was during COVID. So it wasn't like they had like a, a online opening yeah. and everything like that. So they had like a split screen. It was him and he was, they were showing all the artwork. And mm -hmm. it was really cool because like I'm a huge Morats was like if yeah. you if you knew me growing up, Morats was like literally my favorite movie. Like I I had the VHS tape, which was my age, but I had the VHS tape of it and like burnt it out. Um but yeah, but like and then he, he cut to mine. I did like a door I did like a dark night with Jane and Silent Bob and yeah. it, you know, the dork nights kind of like what Joe Sada did. Oh yeah, I, I think I've seen that picture online when I was like, you know you don't have a picture yourself on the internet yeah yeah i i don't yeah there's like there's like one of me and it's like a weird one that like i did a book for like i did a children's book for and oh it's like, and it's like I this switched. really blurry picture of you that like <laughs> other conventions have used as an image like they haven't reached out and said hey by the way can we have a different image it's like this blurry square image that someone's like oh no wonder he draws pictures in the comic book because no one wants to see that guy's face i'm like a sasquatch <laughs> you I'm gotta like catch you in the wild it's just me like like that so but yeah no no uh, but, but i was looking for that and i saw you had posted a screenshot or something like that of kevin smith talking yeah. on a screen and his the picture the thing was behind him yeah and, and i was, was like, like oh that's badass and he looked at it and he was like whoa and he's like 
what who, who did that what's that and you're like oh steve mario and i was like and i'm like looking on my phone like, because it was the live stream on instagram and i'm just like that's me that's me kevin that's me. you mentioned the 1988 thing though you can't see it over there but on the wall over there behind on the other side of darth vader from michael del mundo is the zodiac um schmalky yes print the yeah guy yeah he, he, he yeah i told him to re- i guess joe lived like right near really? there in la it's, and I guess I'm obsessed with the Zodiac white. stuff, man. Yeah. And and he, he uh, I guess it was one of his, like, kind of, I don't know if he, he kind of, like, kind of told me it was, like, almost not like a bucket list thing, but, like, it was one of those things, like, because he was always there. Yep. And uh, he got in, and I was just like, yeah, it's awesome, man, that you got yeah. in. Yeah. It's like a, really dope. And I'm a huge David Fincher fan, too, so all that stuff is, like, it exactly. obviously all all melds together when there's a it's like the same thing when i find out that like i was a big fan of the uh crossover series that came out from um uh what's his face now i can't even think of his name how am i gonna blank on his name kevin Who's no kevin? are you serious right now yeah kevin how am i forgetting his name oh um donny cates i don't know how i oh, got yeah, yeah, yeah. his crossover series and i realized that like well after it came out that ben did a cover for it ben bishop Nice. And it was like well afterwards. I'm like, how the hell did I not know? I like follow Ben on social. How did I not know that this was like this? So luckily I didn't miss the boat on the Zodiac thing. Cause like, I like everything that Schmalky does. And the fact that it was Zodiac and David Fincher all together in one, it was, it was a fun, fun thing to create. Well, that was like a thing. Like he posted it like once or something like that. Once yeah. twice, you don't really like post it like crazy. I think he had like too much going on, but. I mean- and he also opens the store like once every year. So. <laughs> Is this gonna be like just the yeah. shit on Schmalky hour, or is this? Yeah, like- yeah, basically the Joe, the Joe shitty hour. Yeah, I shitty know. hour, Joe. I mean, I got it's funny too because like, there's seven years of darkness right here. There's seven years of darkness right here. Yeah, I think it's, it's all awesome. I got. The book's it's awesome. The book's Ben's right here. Ben, Ben's, Ben Bishop. Awesome. Oh, this is uh, Clerks right here. This is this is the Bangor Comic and Toy Con. When nice. uh, the Clerks guys are there, this is a beer label that I actually designed and made with. That's uh, right. Yeah, you do the the beer at the beer yeah. thing, man. That is yeah, awesome. that's uh, with the art. The drawing on there is by Bob. Um, I forget his name. Who does artwork for for Bangor Comic Con? But the rest of the label is mine. But yeah, and it's actually signed by the guys. But that we're not awesome. here to talk about clerks. We're here to talk about Steve Mardo. The uh, what he called what he said to me off air, guys. The greatest comic book artist ever live. So don't let him think that he's not. Kind let's, let's of. Make yeah. sure. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Well, you're myself. the greatest comic book artist in that room you're in right now. I'm the greatest comic book artist in uh, this house, Rhode Island. No, no, I'm only kidding. I'm not. There's like there's super talented people in Rhode Island. Isn't it funny that Rhode Island has one of the biggest comic cons in the smallest state? And I'm and I'm never in it. Do you ever go to it? Do you actually go to? It? Have you been to it? No, I, I I did I did I have done the show before. Okay, I have done the show before. It's just uh, unfortunately things things have happened. Mm-hmm. And I just, haven't had time to go into it but uh but no yeah it's a it's a it's a big show it's a huge huge show and it's like you can get lost in there it's like it's crazy there's people probably from like the 2014 show that are probably lost in there they're still coming out like what is going on here wait pandemic what happened what's going on they just they're just like they 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 survived on like half empty dunkin donuts cups and Dude, I yeah. think this is a show. We're creating a movie right now. How great, like a like a post apocalyptic movie. We're We're like you're at that. a comic con and the world comes to an end on the outside, and you don't realize it's going on. And you see a zombie, but you think it's a zombie, but maybe you think it's cosplay, but it and actually is it. a real that's, zombie. That's the that's the M M Y Shyamalan twist of it is that it's all cosplay. It's not really yeah. zombies. Holy and you shit! Th- we just we just and you think it's a Superman cosplay, but it's actually really Superman. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got it. We got this going. It's going to be like the crappiest all over the place thing. It's, it's just like, great. It's going to be fantastic. Do you ever see the the, the crowdsourced uh, um, uh, RoboCop no. movie? They did. It was like all these comedians and all these. Uh, it's like totally. Uh, what is it? Not safe for work kind of. Yeah. Movie. It's just they did. They took all these like. It's almost like they they just took scenes from RoboCop and just made them as shitty as possible. Like there's one part where it's literally like him when, when he's Murphy and he's meeting all the cops at the yeah. police department and everything like that. And remember how it was like a locker room scene for some reason because <laughs> yeah. like it's the eighties and you had to have like naked people in movies in the eighties. Like they had to have one scene with like a naked woman or some yes. guys that have cheeks in it. Yes. Um, 
but they did it like computer generated like a, you know like those like bad sim yes. sims things you see online yeah but like and it was like that and they did it with like auto voice so it's like hey murphy what are you? but it's just like naked people everywhere <laughs> And they just like Sims naked people, people walking, walking around like, aimlessly around. It's like the best thing ever. Where do you and, find like, this? Every, is it on YouTube or is like, it? But every scene is, is different. So oh, like, yeah. There's like a part where he shoots the guy's dick off, but there's yep. like a million That's awesome. eyes that come out and they just they just they're just hanging out and just shooting them all. It's it's great. I, I don't know exactly who did it, but it's it's amazing. It's one of the most amazing the- movies. Invention of the internet is one of the worst things that's ever created come out, but it's also one of the greatest things that's ever been exactly, out there. Because, yeah, it's I mean, do you know there's a sword. horror Winnie the Pooh movie coming out? I've seen that. Yes, I saw it. <laughs> my dad goes, my dad was up visiting. They live in Connecticut. So it's, they, my brother actually was at Terrificon this weekend. Oh, cool. And I told him, I was like, oh, Schmalky and Mario over there, go see them. And I think it's just, he was like, he's his first Comic-Con he's ever gone to. And he was just like, why did I not go to a Comic-Con with you? I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. Like, this is overwhelming. And I remember that. I went to a small Comic-Con in an offbeat town in Massachusetts. That's actually where I met George Perez, which is a weird story in itself. But um, Rest in peace, the greatest. Exactly. That's, That's the greatest. That's the greatest. That's actually, so that's one of the few pieces of artwork that I'm allowed to have in the actual house. Oh, you it's have a sketch. Original? I have a sketch from him at, he wrote, and it's in, it's in Sharpie, but it's a sketch from him that he did in front of me. So it's $40, dude, for a photo with him, the sketch, and he'll sign, he was signing any comic books that I wanted. How much again? $40. 40 bucks. Wow. And he was, the booth next to him was Adam West. Again, great legend. Again, dead, passed away currently was still acting in things like uh, family guy and so on and so on. eighty dollars just for a photo so it's like one of the greatest compa creators of all time is over here and a guy that does voices on tv and did tv's batman well, 400 he years ago batman, he was but he was t- 400 years ago i'm sorry I, i'm, and, I'm and, 36 and, so he was before my and time he's also yeah. the mayor yes of, but, of Bohog. But I was thinking to myself, I'm like eighty dollars for a photo, and I said, I think he was also charging sixty or seventy dollars for an autograph. And I was like, nothing. Hey, guess what? If people will pay for it, people are huge uh, Batman fans, huge Adam West fans. Oh, I get great. it. I get it. I he see. was doing it. You, you go to the cons. You should support everybody you love at cons. But it was just like a weird juxtaposition where it was like one side is this guy who is basically probably trying to pay his bills because yeah. you know comic book artists, you guys are hired mm-hmm. per job and so on and so forth. Whereas Adam West is probably still living off the royalties of the Batman TV show. Oh, he was. Yeah, that's, so, that's how, like, yeah, and I'm sure he was like probably paid to be there and like got everything he wanted for free. They're probably just like, oh, you want like a like a, you know, animals in your mm-hmm. <laughs> animals in your hotel room? We yeah, exactly. That. We'll like, get that. I mean, you don't know. Like, whatever whatever you fur- want. Dude. He could have been a furry. We don't know. You were Batman. Uh, we're gonna That's start so the weird. new rumor on the internet that Adam West was a furry that he liked <laughs> to have animal parties at his uh, uh, hotels between between shows um, but this back the back of the wall fingers. it wasn't back of the wall it was like it was boxford or boxborough or something like that actually yeah. the comic-con still happens but it's in a new spot it's the northeast comic collectibles northeast comic convention? yeah um okay. but that was my first one it was like in an armory of some sort of like some sort of like back <laughs> small building that like those are the best these- though those are the best because like the wildest shit yeah. happens at those things and I just didn't know. Like I was walking around and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know if I could bring anything in with me. Like, it's just like one of those weird things. I was probably like 22, 23 years old, maybe more than that, probably, but 25. But I was just like walking around and I was just like, I don't know if I can I bring comic books in. Do I have to buy comic books there? Do people charge for comic yeah, book signings? It was just this weird not knowing. So I understand, especially a con the size of terrific con to not know what the hell is going on and yeah. have all those people there. My brother was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I told him, hey, we'll go to a con together. Uh, at some point, and uh, I said we should go to New York Comic Con together because he lives in Connecticut. Wow. I was like, that's not that far, right? We can do I'm that. In Granite. Well, no, are you guys going to be at Granite? Like, are you gonna I'm going to try to go to Granite. I don't know what the plans are right now. Uh, September is tough because I also want to go see Kevin Smith at uh, the State Theater. He's oh, nice. doing his touring his uh, Clerks Three thing, mm-hmm. uh, and I just it's happening in September too, so I don't know. I'm having the guys, I'm having Chris on from Granite the that's podcast nice. in a couple of weeks to talk Granite Con. As well as Randy, a guy who helps him out. He's also a fish kid. Um, he's going to be on too. We're going to talk about that. But I'm going to try. I'll be, I'll be there in spirit. Yes, exactly. Right. But I mean, uh, October is Bangor Comic and Toy Cons, Wicked, Weekend of the Wicked. So I'll be there yes. for sure. Uh, the guys from the bunch of the people from It, the movie It, the uh, Loser Clubs are going to be there. 
some people from X Men's animated TV show uh, are going to be there. So that's that's another big one I'm waiting for the '97 look. Yeah, and then uh, and then main comic and ToyCon happens in April, so we're excited for that too. And did you see I the announcement there, of who I the first guest was? What's up? Do you see the announcement of the first guest for the main comic and ToyCon? No, who was it? Corey Taylor from Slipknot. That's <laughs> that's crazy. It's awesome. I think that's it's awesome. like great. No, that is, it's crazy. About three or four years ago, uh, Bangor Comic and Toy Con, when it when it was happening at the Cross Insurance Center, had um, uh, Joey Fatone was it? And he was a, here's the deal. It was a smash hit. And guess what? It was one of the most successful cons they've had because it reached a broad variety of people. When you just do pop culture or just do comic book related things, oh, some does, of those yeah. comic cons, you you lose some people. But like there was people who who myself being a comic book nerd and my wife being, being a fan, she might want to go with me. It's a second ticket being sold and so on and so no, forth. So it is, it is smart. I just didn't see the, I don't see the crossover at all between Slipknot and, and, and Superman. Just we'll figure it out. We'll oh, see. I mean, but. like, didn't, didn't they come, didn't they have a comic? Like, like you, Evanescence thing? has a comic book coming out. <laughs> yeah. Why weren't you asked to do a variant cover for the Evanescence comic book? I know. Exactly. Reach out I to think, me. With not of an essence or whatever, or like you need to do now. You need to get in touch with the guys over at Bangor Comic and Toy or yeah. Main Comic and Toy Con to do a, a poster or something. I'll do like a an slip not scene like, yeah, poster. Like Two thousand, like get the yeah. get Limp Biscuit or something. Family Value oh. Store. Yep, exactly. Yes, I went to that. Do like the whole thing. I'll be I'll be the new Greg Capullo. Do the, the, the coin, the coin, do the coin seed. Remember, you did the coin seed. Yes. Was it follow the year? Uh, yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. He's like, coming. Oh is he God, coming back? He's actually. Never. He's coming back to do what? Spawn Batman again too. Him and oh. Tobey Farland. Yes. Yes, he is. He's the I, I, love, I love. It's funny. Like I was a huge like so, um, like most kids in the '90s, like McFarland was like who I wanted to be. That was like I'm gonna be this guy. That's like that's my dream is to like yep. be this kind of comic book artist. Now, not so much. Um, but like, I remember when Greg Capullo was on, was, was jumped on spawn. I was like such a purist, a spawn yeah. purist. And I was just like, this guy sucks. He doesn't know how to draw. Like not everything is cross hatched and has yes. like little, little things <laughs> on it. Like he sucks. But then like, you realize like he actually knows anatomy and yes. like actually can draw really well. Um, don't get me wrong. Like McFarlane had that style thing going well, for him. It's McFarlane. Like everyone yeah. got, but like, if you look at it, like, is as an actual artist, is like anatomy and everything like that. Which I mean, I get, I get it. Comics are exaggerated yes. anatomy, but like his was just like crazy. I mean, all those '90s guys, all those image guys were just yes. like Jim Lee was like one of the only ones that really like had like this weird like he he just had this construct that he knew how to make a person. But like Rob Layfield, I mean, God. He draw feet. It, it just like yeah, and now you, and he's like a parody of himself. Yep, it's weird. Like you see the Elon Musk thing. Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. Yes, that it's funny if, if if no one ever knows and no one's ever realized this, and this is something that you should actually look into if you were a comic book fan. Look at all of Rob Liefeld's covers that he's done over the years, and tell me how many of them include someone's feet. <laughs> if they don't, I do that. Like I want to. Do like they cut off the bottom, like if, they, if the character's there, the feet get cut off, or the for the person behind them on the thing is behind, the, their feet are behind a wall or a rock or something like that. It's just something about his ability to do feet. He's like, well, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, I'm just going to not, why would I need to draw feet? I just not have them in any of the covers I do. So. I guess too, like if you're, if that's something that's your kind of weak point or something, yeah. as, as an artist, like why, why draw it? Like you're already getting shine. You're already yes. getting, like people are already like buying at the time, like millions, millions of your comics, like, so what? Like, screw everybody else. Like, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I'm not like he's the best artist or anything like that. Like, I get it. I get that. Like, it's it's weird this industry we we're in because like now it's so, uh, it's such a a, a media like frenzy. Yes. With everything, so you kind of almost it's not like it was like back in the day. Like back in the day, nobody wanted to be in comics. It was like you didn't tell people. You did comics. You were like, I'm doing. You you did it so you can get into illustration. Yeah. Or do like a romance cover, or a paint something, and you just did this for like. It was almost like like uh, like you know, like the dirty magazine. Like nobody yes. wanted, like, didn't want to talk about it. Dead. Like nobody wanted to. And um, but now it's like you tell people 
Like I do a comic, but it's funny because people are still always the same. Like, oh, did you work for Marvel? Do you do yes. something? Thing? Yeah. And then when you kind of tell them like, well, you know, like I've done like the sketch cards and stuff yes. like that, but it's not like, you know, anything like a covering like that. They're just yeah. like, oh, okay. And they yes. just kind of like, it's almost like the way it's like the music industry it's like yes. oh you know if you don't have like a top 100 hit then you're dead oh someday you'll make it yes one of these days you'll get there it's like, there's people out there who are playing it. bars every weekend making more money than someone who actually signed to a small label and was like doing yeah. it before. so it, totally. it's, you know and it's like you you probably are doing there's people like yourself and all these local artists who are doing great just going to conventions and doing covers i mean obviously let's be honest if tomorrow the, the the upper people at marvel were like hey we want you to be a serious cover artist you're not going to say no it's not oh, like you're gonna be like, no. oh hell sorry no. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be one of those like you know you know indie purists who's going to be like i only do slice of life and that's it it's like hell yeah. no i'm going to do like slapstick or something weird yes. like i will i will jump on that i don't care what it is like we have a howard it. the duck book that we want you to do uh, and, I'm down. Yeah, I'm I know. Down. I mean, I think a lot of people actually would do a Howard the Duck book. I would. I, would totally. I, I actually want to do a slapstick book. Like, yeah. I would love to. Like, like it's funny. Like, if if, if Marvel, like, they would contact me and said, you could do whatever book you want to. I probably wouldn't want to do, like, a Spider-Man or something. I'd yeah. probably do, like, like slapstick or, like, remember Terror Inc.? Yes. I would do something like that. Like, a weird, freaking, like, obscure character. Because you can just do whatever you want. Like when you work with those big yep. characters, you can't. There's only there's only so much you can do with them, and that's why it's so that's yeah. why it's weird that you know um, uh, Snyder and and Capullo with with heavy met with um, yeah. metal and yeah. stuff like that, and even all the stuff they did. I was like, they let them do that. I'm like holy shit, that's crazy. Because well, when you do a book like Spider Man, or you do a book like Venom, or any of those other books, you're doing the covers, or even if you're just doing covers, you're not even doing anything mm -hmm. in the interior. You're now put in the categories of like John Romita Jr. and John Romita and, and Todd McFarlane. Like they're going to compare yeah. your artwork to all of those people. Whereas yeah. if you do something that not very many people know about, or a new title, or something like that, there's nothing to compare you to. You're your own person. Exactly. It's Steve it's Mardo the doing the cover art. That's what it is. It's the it's the comparison because there's like 400, you know, 500 million people who have done spider-man but like yes how many of them have actually done something that's kind of like iconic with it mm -hmm. and um i mean i guess it's one of those things like it's if you do something weird with it but this thing is that with, with this industry now that's that's kind of weird is that when you like the, it seems like i don't really know them. i don't yeah <laughs> know the, the 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 crooks of it but it seems like they always want to like play it safe with those characters yep even well, that like was the, the thing. That was back in the day when Todd McFarlane was doing it. They were like, one of the reasons that he basically didn't want to do it anymore is, is because they were making him do it a certain way. And it was like, no, I want to do it this way. And yeah. they were, so they gave him his own book and all that stuff. But like, they had an idea in the head of what Spider-Man would look like. And it's like, no, I also like the idea that when I look at a piece of Steve Marto art, that I know it's yours. It's not like so far off the beaten path that it's different, but it's like when I look at Scotty Young artwork, you're like, okay, I know that's Scotty. No matter what version of Scotty you get, whether it's the early days trying to like do a slightly different version of like Human Torch, or he does these like lanky, kind of thin. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm, 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 a huge, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And then he does. I mean, I have, I have like 17. Yes. I like. Then he does I, this, like Venom. I will, I will. Like, I'm, I'm gonna have to find it for you, but like, I, this is my. I would. I, if you if you met me at a convention, I have like my little geek mm. fame thing. I have Scotty Young's first convention sketch ever. Look at you. See, I went to Chicago Wizard World like back in like '99. Yep. I was like this teenage kid, and like I went with an old friend of mine, and like the first booth at the show was uh, was Scotty Young, wow. and he was like just working on some random thing with his buddy. And he was like, and I was like, dude, and I, at the time I was like big into the graffiti underground hip hop yeah. stuff. And, and I loved his stuff because it was like, it was, it was good. It was like, it wasn't just like some graffiti artist trying to do comics. He was like yeah. a comic guy that like graffiti art. And um, like, he was just like, it was like, it was like 15, 20 bucks. Yeah. I know now it's like, it's this now, like for him to like breathe yes. on paper, is, it'll cost you like. Five thousand dollars. Well, it's you know? my wife. My wife thought that when I was mentioning Scotty Young and I was getting some tattoos and, and, and collecting the books, because like I don't. It's hard to say. Like he's not the best artist out there. What I will put him in the category as is 
he probably makes the most money in the quickest amount of time of any artist out there because a lot of these sketches that he sells online in these books he like could eat uh, breakfast and do the thing and he's done yeah. oh yeah remember yeah i remember back in the day he was doing those like those the the the, the doodles the more yes doodles or whatever and he just bang them out and you could tell he was doing it in like maybe an hour maybe and he's and he'd sell it for a thousand dollars and you're just yeah. like what the hell and my life is wrong like what is going on? but she reached out <laughs> what to am the, i doing the, wrong yeah uh, Megan, his uh, his manager, and she reached out and was just like trying to figure out how much and so on. So she looked online. And she goes, "Oh, I thought he was like, oh, <laughs> like like getting yeah. commission from Steve Mardo and getting a commission from from Scotty Young. Yeah, it's, it's like not, completely it's not different. Yeah, exactly. like, oh, okay. Unless that's why you that's why you only have prints on your wall and not actual original art. Unless it's like, Scotty yes. Scotty Mardo. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. That's be my well. It's funny. Speaking of Scotty, <laughs> so we'll get into a little bit about actual mardo here but yes yeah, scotty actually, um, actual I was, stuff that i'm actually supposed to be on the podcast for yes i uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my life this is though this is how i am like you I, I like people like like people bust my balls because like i do conventions and i'll sit with somebody and just bullshit with them for like an hour and they'll be like you didn't make any sales and i'll be like eh, but that this is what this podcast is about it's a nerd yeah. you know talking and like let's be honest like i get to talk to you about it because my wife's like stop talking to me about this yeah Oh, totally. Like when I, when I came back from, from Terrificon, I'm telling them, and like, and like in the morning when I was getting ready to go, I'm telling her about all these people yeah. and things and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. My wife is, is wonderful and yeah, she knows how much I love this and, and everything like that. But, um, but yeah, she could just give her shit yeah. less. Yeah. Like yeah. She's yeah. just kind of like, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Really cool. Okay, cool. And then like, that's it. So yeah. it's not, yeah, it's that same thing here. And she looks, but I, she definitely hears me talk about it way too much. And then yeah. it's the mixture now between, cool things in comics and the cool things that are coming up on the podcast. So it's like a mixture of the two now. And she's like, I thought the podcast was supposed to say you wouldn't have to talk to me about the stuff. Now you're talking about the things that happened on the podcast or what's coming up on the podcast. And I was like, yeah, you know, it is what it is, but she deals with it. And sometimes she talks to me about engineering things that I have no idea what she's talking about. Well, there you she go. understands that. So we're, you know, we got both of it. The only thing we really have in common is the kid. I'm just, just kidding. Just it's, kidding. A, it's a balance. It's a balance. Yeah. It's that it's the, the relationship is a balance. It's not but Steve it's Mardo not, is an artist. 100, 100. But Steve Mardo is an artist. And that's why he's here. No. Um, exactly. And that's why I'm here. I'm not here to talk about uh, uh, what the hell were you even talking about? God, well, so so I, I want to say before we, move any, before we move any further on this, that Todd McFarlane is one of my favorite comic book artists of all time. Yes. I will say he is not even in my top 100 of comic book writers. <laughs> no, that man, that man cannot write a comic. <laughs> As much uh, as I love him and, and Todd, you want to yeah. come on the podcast anytime. We'll have you on anytime. But there's just something about the amazing story of what Spawn is as a book. But then you go to read it and you're just like, it's because it's like a because it's like a 12 year old's wet dream. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what yes. I mean? It's like it's vengeance. It's mm -hmm. you know devils and demons and giant guns and you know in some sometimes it's like you know chicks half naked yeah. running around and and that's like you know what it is and and he's just and that's what he's doing and and i and i get it i get it because like you have that like teen angst and you're like yes. this guy is so badass like i want i want to i want to have a deal with the devil so i can even have a meatball face and yes destroy my enemies so yes you know what i mean like but it's the name that's got him this, this far though and that's the thing yeah. because of his spider-man yeah. work his venom work and all that stuff to get him into spawn now he's like obviously was one of the founders of image and then 300 and i think this week was 322 or 323 issues yeah. of spawn not including the angela books that came out in the early days and other spinoffs and all this spawn universe king spawn all that stuff it's the longest running independently owned comic book in history. And he writ has written the majority of those. Sure. Books. There was a time in the middle there where he kind of like tried to do other things and they were selling like 8,000 like, copies of a book, but. Is his whole claim to fame like that? Like he's, he's been a part of it in some mm -hmm. manner for whatever amount of issues. So even if mm -hmm. he's not necessarily penciling it, he's inking it. And if he's not writing it, he's doing some sort of art inside. So, yeah. which I mean, I get it. Like, I guess that's his, that's his yep. thing. I mean, you know, if, if he's, I mean, that's, that's a lunatic though, to me, like, that's like, to me, that's some sort of weird, like who, who wronged you in life yes. kind of thing. But that the funny thing about McFarlane is 
his ba- bank account, I almost guarantee you his bank account, the majority of the money that is deposited, deposited is into his bank account. What? Is Bitcoin. Yeah, no. It comes yeah. from McFarland Toys. Yes. You know what I mean? It's almost like the uh, Amazon thing of all. Amazon's number one revenue generator is Amazon Web Services, like their servers. Really? Their website itself, when you buy a freaking tennis ball on amazon.com that's the not when the you majority. buy a They're, toy on amazon the majority of the money they get from people is your hulus and your netflix and all those companies who have server space through amazon web services and so it's like todd mcfarlane is known for spawn and selling comic books and image and all that stuff but i'm like i almost guarantee you that the, the toys he makes and the, and the sports figures that he makes and all that yeah. stuff is actually probably paying the bills more than his two dollar 99 cent comic book that comes out once a month because it is the cheapest comic book on the market still that and mm-hmm. saga they're both two dollars and ninety nine cents still, but really, this wow. Yeah. This and the only time he's come up with a he came up with a five ninety nine book, but it was a double issue. Yeah, um, I remember that. Bond Universe that. and a couple yeah. other ones that have come up recently, but other than that, he's been two ninety nine, and he just and he lets they let at Image. If you ever release a book from Image, they let you pick your price. They don't say you need to be three ninety nine, four ninety nine, whatever. And so he says, if anybody else wanted to come up with a two dollars ninety nine cent book, you can. Obviously, if you do that, you make less money, but. I mean, maybe you, you make have, more. Maybe people will buy the three dollar book more often because it's three dollars compared to four or five dollars. I don't know, but I'll be. I'll, I'll if I ever get two seventy five. I'll be like <laughs> two ninety eight. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, I'll my book is like, the cheapest it'll be like book on the, the market. Most random, a dollar thirty seven. Yes. For this comic, back, back in your draw, no, what was it? Thirty seven cents. That's it. Thirty seven cents. If you buy three, they're free. No, I'm, our 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 post apocalyptic con yes. comic will be a dollar which features all kinds of copywritten characters that we did not get permission to use Ex- yeah we'll parody them because it's, it's super, that, that weird that weird slippery slope of parody we'll just yes, it's super dude is. yeah not superman super dude <laughs> super chick we'll just go with, we'll super also chick. go with super offensive we'll go like, like, <laughs> oh god oh <laughs> Names that are not appropriate to say anymore. We'll just use all those too, and just you know, we'll just we'll be what it is. We'll be a Mad Magazine style comic book. There we just go. Like go all uh, again. Yeah. And Maybe. Mad was awesome. That's how. That's one of the books that got me into, into doing this. Yeah. See, this so uh, call comes full circle here. Exactly. So I have in my notes here, not very many notes here, but that <laughs> the only book in the history of mankind that you ever worked on is Epic Tavern: Tales from the Fantastic Crime. <laughs> that's it. That's the only thing I've ever worked on. No, that's I, that I own. I own a. I, you gave me a print from the Bangor Comic and Toycon that's over there. Um, and then on the floor that I use for Matt. It's actually in the <laughs> on the floor. No, it's see. Hold on. No, it's true though. Like you know what? I'm here. I just went here. I was gonna say. You know what's funny is that like oh that oh nice. Oh, so I don't have enough space on the wall. I I hear you. I hear you. I have I have one of those guys. Yeah. So this is like a this is like what you would use for your work, but I have. Not my work in it. So you go to like editors and you show them, yeah. you go, this show is them my someone spot. else's work. <laughs> I never got that. There's people that do that, you know. Really? There's artists that do that. There's like there's art. There's people. They're not. They're not. They're they're, they're not artists technically. Yes. But they'll like go and they'll be like, oh, this is some stuff I did, and it's it'll be literally somebody else's work, like photocopied. Like this is a recommendation, by the way, to up? do. If That's- you ever want to do this, it's a recommendation. This is Geiger, okay, who did X Men. He did his pencil. Yes. He released his pencil, inks, and colors all wow. on three. And I used to have it on the wall displayed like in order, which is pretty badass. Ben actually sent one out in his thing up there. But what is I was it Ronin? To find, did he do like a Ronin cover? Yeah, it's one of his Ronin covers. It's the, uh, I think, four or five. Nice. Uh, but Ben sends that's, me that's shit really all the time, smart. so I don't have enough space for Ben's stuff either. So but I have that's it in really, here somewhere, that's, maybe. That's really smart. Did I take it out because I needed toilet paper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're here. <laughs> Oh, there it is. What? Well, yeah, that's the print for the show. Yes. Ta da! Here's my stuff. My weird stuff. My weird. Which is kind of more of my like normal stuff because I do yeah. a lot of odd, odd drawings. But um, yeah, I don't know. This is this is so I was like I don't have a space for it, but I'm like I kind of want to like be able to flip through it and like rotate it out on the wall cool. and stuff that I probably won't hang. I made this poster so I got them to sign it, but I don't care about anime, and that's why. <laughs> but uh, hope. None of those people will be on your podcast. No. no. Um, but you no, know, so the <laughs> book that's most recently been released, that you, are you did you do the artwork in the entire thing? I did the whole entire book, yes. So you did pencils, inks, colors, all that stuff? I didn't know. No, Levine did covers. Steve Levine did, did colors. And he absolutely hate. He would call me up every day and just tell me how much he hated me. 
uh, we did a. Do you uh, not so, like doing colors, or is this just well, a team I, effort? I'm, because it takes guess, a lot of work, obviously. I get so detailed and everything like that. Like, so I have the, the book here, and this is like, so this is this. Yeah. This is a. Uh, I I can't. I'm. It's a two page spread with 150 wonderful characters that I drew in there. And um, thanks to Sean French. I, thanks to no, actually, it wasn't Sean. Really. In the description in the description. Excuse me. In the script, he had like four characters. <laughs> he said he's in a thing. He's in like you know. Uh, Victor walks in and, yeah. and and there's like he put like the thing there was like a the giraffe, the uh, dinosaur, and like three other things. And then he said, "Well, he goes, I want you to just do your thing that you do your weird yeah. thing." And it just got more and more. It was like thirty characters, and then I was like, oh, "Let's do like more characters." And it was sixty characters, and then like got to a hundred, and then like I just went crazy. And it's actually eight. Um, one second. Let me. I, I can yeah, actually get yeah. off for you. Yes. Yes. So. So it's actually uh, eight. It's eight eleven. Oh wow! By seventeen pages. Ah. So, like, it's actually eight, eleven by seventeen pages. Um, so well, that—that's kind of a not a good one. Jeez. But um, any more room here? I do. Do I? Do I? Do I? Don't I? <laughs> do you or don't you? Do I or don't I? Yeah, there's some more, some more of them. Like, I have them. I have them in a, in a, in a thing, but it's like yeah. Basically. But it, but it's, it's it's eight eleven by seventeen pages and basically um um it fractured my friendship with Steve Levine forever and he will never and he will hate me forever. No, <laughs> Steve, Steve's a great guy. I I could totally see though why I wanted this was my first like full full book that yeah. I did. it was it was it was like a twenty six page book. I love I love working with Sean French. He's just amazing dude. Um, uh, Tomo Marasaki, who is the like art director and kind of for the game epic mm -hmm. tavern he does a lot of that stuff he's just i talked with him a lot he's done stuff for like spider-man 2 for the playstation like back cool. in the day. yeah yeah just like just and one of the smartest guys like i've ever met in my life um but he was just amazing talking to and uh rich uh, uh rich rich uh Bizzo, who's the like ceo guy there at, at hyperkinetic kind of talking back and forth. So, they, so it was just like a great experience and it was one of those things that like I've worked with so many people um, and I've worked on projects that have never seen the light of day. And uh, knowing that this was kind of a done deal and this was coming out, I really want to just like blow it out of the water. And I think too, like me and Sean were saying too, when we came out with this book, we wanted to like, there's a lot of story in it. There's a lot mm -hmm. of story. There's a lot of art. It's almost like oversaturated. <laughs> but like we were saying like, but we were saying like, you know, for the, people are always like complaining that like, well, you got a lot of art, but no story, or you got a lot of story, but the art kind of sucks. We wanted to kind of be like, well, we're giving you like the kitchen sink. Like we're giving you everything we can with this book. So I'm very proud of it. And I'm, and um, you know, we got a lot of good, we got a lot of positive feedback from it and stuff like that. Um, some people weren't so happy about it, but you know, I think they just don't, I didn't understand it. They didn't get it. Yeah. Like I watched, like I'm not I'm not one of these people I don't like I didn't like go out and look for like reviews on it, but I did see like one that was like online and the guy was just like I don't like it I don't I, I just don't get it like he didn't get it he didn't like it because he just didn't get it, but he yes. was just so I mean I feel like I made him so mad. Well, you know what's funny about that kind of a person though they're just gonna be mad. It's not yeah, and I was just like I'm I'm not trying to I don't want to I'm not trying to get you mad. And this book wasn't for you. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, there's, books that, there's books that I don't like and I'll read them and I'll say, oh, okay, but I won't like, I don't know. I, my, my blood won't boil. No, I'm not going to write the artist or the creators and be like, by the way. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. I like, I got into a tangent of reading reviews of other podcasts and it's just interesting to see why someone would give a podcast a one-star review and just not listen to it. Like that's, there's a mixture between like giving a review 
or just not listening to it? Like, what's the, like, why would you take your time yeah. out of your day? To, like, I'm telling you right now, I don't think I've ever read a review and said, I don't want to listen to this podcast because of this review or whatever. I just listen to the podcast. Yeah. Like, if I don't like it, I'll turn it off and stop reading it. I'm listening to it. Well, that's just the thing. All these people, like, getting out their angst online about how, like, they don't like one of the two hosts or, like, they like the old podcast better than the new one and all this stuff. And I'm just like, what is the point? Like, the, Kevin, you know, Kevin Smith was the one who I was reading. Kevin Smith's not reading these. He has no idea anything is people reviewing this. Like he's not yeah. going through the reviews and being like, huh. He goes, enough people has shit on Kevin Smith's stuff yeah. since the day he made clerks that he right. knows better than to actually let it bother him. Like he does not let it bother him. And he's, so he's not reading it. Yeah, he can wipe his tears with hundred dollar bills. Yes. Like that's what he's doing. Like he's like, yes. oh, for me. You yeah. know. Well, it's like <laughs> people kind of crapped on Robert Kirkman for kind of like getting my money i've bought in all the issues of walking dead deluxe the color version yeah. of the original that had a couple extra pages in the back of it and it's like yes i own a majority of the first walking dead series but now i own all of the so far the 43 issues of the deluxe and i'm like yeah he just basically got all my money and he's one of the richest comic book people in the world yeah, yeah. But, if, but if you enjoy it and it's something that yeah. you know, why why like that's the yeah. thing like i don't get with people with like the when it comes to like the arts and like you know doing creative stuff yeah, of course it's going to be, you know, people are going to have, people are going to say it sucks and people are going to say it's great. But I mean, at the end of the day, if somebody's like hating on it and don't get me wrong, like, you know, yeah. back in the day when I was a kid, you know, we all kind of, I don't want this guy, I don't want this artist. Yeah. But when you go through life and especially if you do it for a living, any kind of creative endeavor, you realize how hard it is to make these things happen. Mm -hmm. Like I created my first comic, you know, a while back. And I did everything for it. I did like a Kickstarter and, and it, it failed miserably. Um, but like I did, I put it all together and um, I realized just how hard it is to make these things. And it's mm -hmm. how it's like, it's like, you know, you hear these things about movies. Like people are like, I don't even know how movies are yeah. even put out into the, into out, out of the theaters because there's so much tape and people telling you to change this and that. And the other thing is so many hands in the pot that at the end of the day, like, that's why, like, some of these movies, like, that's why, like, I'm not one of these people that, like, if a Marvel movie sucks or, if, like, a DC yeah. movie sucks or whatever, yeah, I mean, you can always, you know, people are very black and white and they want to blame it, like, well, the writer, it's the writer's yeah. fault, or the director, or, or the actor's fault, and it's, like, you never talk about the person who's editing the movie, you mm -hmm. never talk about, like, the CEO guys who are, like, well, I don't, like, I want nipples on his suit instead, you know what I mean, yes. like, you know, you I know, want Nicolas Cage to play Superman. Yeah, exactly. Like you, yeah. These people that have like, and people who have no clue about yeah. the the space that this stuff is created in, and they just kind of figure like, well, if I know better than them. Yeah, and it all gets like convoluted into this big muck, and that's why it's that's why it's. I think that's why like the Marvel movies. I'm not a like I'm not like a huge like I'm yeah. not a Marvel zombie, but like I think that's why they work because they try to kind of stick close to what they know mm -hmm. is not all these hands in the pot saying like, I mean, that's the thing I think about why DC is kind of whatever is because you have all these dudes that are don't know. They've never read mm -hmm. a comic book in their life. And they're like, well, you know, well, like that, that's the thing. Like I'm not a Ben Affleck. I thought it was actually pretty good. Yeah. As Batman. I not, not my, not my favorite Batman, no. but, but he did a pretty good job being like the dark Knight Batman. Um, but yeah, like you get, but you get people who are just like, they don't know what's going on mm -hmm. in that world. And then they decide, but they're calling the shots. Because they're paying the bills in a sense, like, cause we're paying the bills cause we're, we're, we're buying the ticket to the movie. So yeah. we feel like we had the say in it yeah. because I'm the one paying for it. And it's like, no, because this movie was made prior to you buying the movie ticket. So you yeah. buying the ticket isn't getting these actors paid or the editor or the creator. They're already paid. All those people are paid. It's yeah. over. So whether you like the movie or not, they all got their money. That's you the don't thing, buy yeah. a ticket not... to it. You're not going to, they might not make the sequel. This person might not get yeah. another job, but that doesn't mean that they didn't get paid for the work that you saw on the screen. You did. If yeah. you didn't like Ben Affleck as Batman, he still made money on it. And guess what? Oh, yeah. He doesn't care. He's moving on. He's going to do the next thing. Apparently well, maybe not. he did care. I just I saw know. something. Apparently, he's going to be in Aquaman or something. He's going to be in Aquaman. He's going to be in the Flash as well. But yeah. Oh, 
before. I, I heard the only reason he didn't do the Batman was he was dealing with some substance abuse issues and, and, and stuff like that. So there's, there is more to that. But what I'm getting out of this whole statement <laughs> you're making here is that if people don't like Epic Tavern's book here, then it's Sean French's fault because he's the editor. Basically, yeah. Right? Yeah, we'll just blame it. Actually, right. is he, did he edit it? I mean, he wrote it, right? So no, I mean, Sean, yeah, Sean, no, Sean is actually, Sean is a very, uh, he's, a, yes. he's a mad scientist genius. And he uh, like all the, basically like a huge majority of the Black Caravan books he's edited. Yes. Yeah, and I mean Schmalky so, won't go to anybody else now. He yeah, said he's the yeah. only person. Yeah, and, and to be honest, like I totally agree with him. Like honestly, if I'm going to do something else, I would I want Sean to be involved mm-hmm. because he's just that that great of a guy and he's that smart of a guy. Um, but yeah, working with him and knowing him and the whole like you know, the main crew and, and yeah. you know, I, I first met Steve at Granite Con. That's why Granite Con kind of holds a, yeah. a special place in my heart. But you're not going to it. But I'm not going to it this year. I'll be at, I'll be at SPX. Um, I'm just going to call you out on it right now. You, you are, know, it's yeah, funny. I'm fine. talking to the guys, like I mentioned to Grant from Granite Con in a couple of weeks. I'm going to call them out, call you out. Thanks. I'm kidding. I won't call Thanks you so out. Much. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you can. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'll be, I'll be Hey, any publicity is good publicity, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, who yeah. is this Steve Mardo guy? Let me look him up. <laughs> what a jerk. I can't, I, all I can find is a pixelated face online. Or, or, or artwork. It, so it's funny when I first it, saw your profile, your, your picture, it reminded me of like the 70 year old Facebook people who don't want their picture on there. So they just find like a picture of Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> to put as their Facebook profile picture. But I'm like, but that's different. Cause like, it'd be like, if you were drawing Cal- Calvin and Hobbes, like, so it's your yes. artwork, at least it's not someone else's artwork as your Facebook yes. profile picture. It's just, I'm gonna your artwork I'm gonna, is more important than your face. Let's be honest. That's how you make gonna, money. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do like a picture of, uh, what's that Sunday, Sunday comic, the, the woman, Nancy, is that what it's called? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Yes. She not has, you, though. Yeah, it's not, not going to be your artwork. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be like, uh, yeah, it's going to be one of those things. You know, she always has a problem going to like a store or something. It's going to be, it's, it's called Karen. It's a Karen. 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 <laughs> but, <laughs> look at that. We got another one. Another Sunday, even though people don't read papers anymore. No. Another Sunday. Uh, What's a paper? Sunday comic strip. Karen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the terrible first world problems she has. Yes, about how people don't like her comic books. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so back to Epic Tavern. Um, so it's all Epic Tavern. Tales from the Fantastical Crime Unit. Crime Unit. And Epic Tavern is the is the game? The game, or, yes. yes. It's the game it comes from. So RPG, if anybody has, Yes. It's on Steam. Um, it, they're still like, it's in beta mode, so they're still like work, they're still doing mm-hmm. it. Um, uh, I believe that sometime this year or beginning of next year, they'll have actually the finished product, which is another reason why we came out with this as like a one shot. Um, but we're, we're still, we're, I mean, the book is basically, we're kind of cracking at it and stuff like that. It's still, it's still got legs. So mm-hmm. it's really great. Um, it's just kind of like the other side of things, you know, there's all these, it's like we were saying before, like you get all these, it's, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but like you have like certain things going on with the game and certain yep. things going on with the people who play the game and it's still in beta and this and that. But um, but yeah, no, it, the game is fun too. Like the, I'm not really like an RPG guy and they gave me like a free like version of it to play. Yeah. And I was playing it and I was just like, this is like really fun, <laughs> like super fun. And like, that's the thing. I'm not normally that kind of, yeah. I don't normally go for those kinds of games. I'm like a, you know, button, ba- I'm like, I'm like a caveman. I just like the button. <laughs> Bashing games, you're like, yeah, just, that's literally what I do. I just oh, I did a spin move. How did I do that? <laughs> um, but I yeah, no. it. so Sean's been at like cons and he's put his like display up of the game and stuff like that. You can go over and play it, yeah. stuff like that. It's been, it's a really fun thing that it's really cool too. Cause it's like, how often do you see comic books that come out of video games? I mean, there's comic books that are derivatives because they're a property that is a video game, but also is a movie or, or a character that's been for Marvel or, you know, the Spider-Man video game. But like, it's obviously been a comic book before it was a video game. Whereas this is like a comic book that came from a video game. And well, thing, it was pretty cool. Yeah, we, we tried to kind of, I mean, that's the thing. The the characters in the game are not necessarily, they're, they're, they're in the game, but they're not the characters, the main characters of the yeah. video game. Like we tried to offshoot it and put it in its own world. And, um, you know, a lot of the things I drew, I kind of like not reimagined, but like I kind of 
help them a little bit with mm-hmm. that direction, which was really fun too, because it's something that like, I, I had no clue that that was going to be part of it. Like, I, I thought they were just going to be like, hand you over the characters, do this. We're going to have this story. But they were just like, we want input from you. We want these characters to really, we want this world to really shine. We want this mm-hmm. world to really grow and be something. And so it's just, it's literally just been like uh, us having conversations and, and me drawing stuff and crazy monsters and stuff and them just being like and the funny thing is is that everything that like i've done for the most part for them i haven't had any pushback like everyone's just like that's what was in our head like that's what kind of we had in our head so it's really cool to be on the same playing field as these people who are like legends in their field so like it kind of like it, it makes you feel like you're doing something right so some of the best books i've read are the ones that you statements of you like saying that like you're the artist, okay? You're, we're going to pay you to draw this book. I want most of the input to come from you on the artwork. Sean will deal with the story. Steve will do the colors. Obviously, there's someone above you saying, well, this is, wouldn't happen in Epic Tavern, so we mm-hmm. can't do that. But like, when it's the same thing I get, some of the best can designs I've ever done for Orna Brewing Company have been the ones where they're like, no, you're the artist. You know, it's like, this is the colors mm-hmm. that work. Okay, this is the colors that work. We're going to go with that. There's been times where like, no, that's not going to work because we need, we had this other thing in our head. And a lot of times I'm like, can you please tell me that before I do the work? Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, uh, but is it some of the best things I've ever products I've ever worked on that I've loved is the fact that they're just like, no, we're hiring you to be the artist. We want you to do it. We might have tweaks or we might say you need to use this color or this, this creature has one eye versus two eyes or whatever, mm-hmm. but then they just let you go with it because sometimes you have to picture it in your head and do it. And so some of the best products I've worked, uh, heard about or worked on is a team effort which is awesome yeah. to hear that this was pretty good team effort on that. And, and working with someone like Steve Levine, how was that? Like, that, that, I mean, that must be a dream come true. It was, it was one of those like bucket list kind of things. Cause I met Steve at Grant, like I said, mm-hmm. probably like, I want to say like before COVID probably like 18 to 2018 or whatever. And um, I was tabling next to him and I, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not, like I said, I'm not one of these like celebrity type people, yeah. who are like, ah! <laughs> but like, I Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I mean, that's like yeah. there were like three things that got me into doing this for a living, and it was Ninja Turtles, um, Spider Man, and you know, like Batman. That was yeah. like three things that like, and then and and for the most part, like as a kid growing up, like you know, there's comics, but like you you all you see is the TV in front of you, yeah. so you, that's the thing you you associate it with first, even though you know there's other like there's toys and there's comic books and stuff, but like. Um, and I, and I think, I think the thing that I loved and it's kind of just, and the thing, the thing with Ninja Turtles that really got me is how quirky they were mm-hmm. because I was like the chubby kid in school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wasn't like bullied or anything like that, but I was just like, kind of like the big kind of chubby yeah. kid. I think, I, think, I think the thing that really saved me was that I had a sense of humor and I could draw. Um, those are the two things that kind of got me from not getting the crap kicked out of me. Um, but, but like, I was, you know, not really great at sports and not like this dude who was like, I couldn't like do pop wheelies on bicycles and impress girls and stuff like that. So like, it was like, wow, there's these little like fat turtle guys and they're ninjas. Holy crap. Like I could be that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what really kind of, and I know it's so weird sounding, but that's what that's what connected me to them because they were so they eat pizza all the time like shit i eat pizza (laughs) my mom makes celeste pizzas all the time i'm gonna put skittles on top of mine and eat them and see (laughs) see, my dad my dad is a huge rat too (laughs) we have rats in our house they could be not they're almost that big (laughs) but no (laughs) but yeah but like that's like the kind of stuff that really like that's what that's what got me and then like and then and then ninja turtles is kind of like you know I, I remember getting the, the 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 trades and stuff like that of the original series. Yep. And I remember actually buying like one of the, I remember watching the first, like I can remember as clear as day, I remember watching the first episode on TV. It was like part of that power pack they had. And it was like mm-hmm. Rambo. It was like the most, it was the most like worst thing you could put for kids, but it was the 80s. Yes. yes. So it was like, you had like, uh, it was like the power pack. It was like some crappy cartoon you never heard of. And then it was like Rambo, Robocop, and then Ninja Turtles at 4.30. Yep. And I was over my grandmother's house. It was on like some Boston station. Like, what was that weird 
packs or something like that Pax 25 or something and um it was like the first episode i remember watching yeah. and and because it was like right when school started and you know how all those shows came out like in september and i remember it being like the first episode and i remember watching it and being like oh my god this is so cool like they're saving this chick and it's like the chick is like you know it's like really cute girl and like a red hair and like a yellow <laughs> suit and like that could be me when i'm older i could be a turtle and ninja and then, like, michelangelo, the turtle. And then michelangelo who steve is you know basically yep. based off of um and he had nunchucks and that was like you know cool back in the day and everyone had like a cool weapon from like an 80s movie so like yeah but then like but then but but just to kind of fast forward yeah um yes he was just so cool he looked at my artwork and he was like oh cool he's like you know like i like your stuff and i was like yeah that's awesome man like thank you so much like that's a huge compliment and then like towards the end of the towards the end of the the convention he's like you want to do like a jam piece together and i was just like floored i was literally floored because this guy has probably worked with some of the best people in comics and yeah he's done some of the most iconic artwork in pop culture yes. history yeah and i was just like yeah I'll, yeah i'll do it and so we did like and if you have it we have prints of it at um at shows and stuff we did like a a daredevil wrath piece together um and uh then i ended up doing a mikey uh daredevil piece with him mm-hmm. that that we both kind of traded off on but like and then we just kind of like started talking and you know he's just such a down-to-earth guy and um he's you know like we talk turtles and stuff but like for the most part we just talk like you know about do- like his dogs and stuff like that yeah. like weird stuff or i'll or i'll like you know call him up and just talk random junk so it's just weird that you can do that but like when we when we started working on this yeah he, he got he was like he goes uh, there was another podcast and uh i think steve was like yeah i told you he's like i told i told him not to go crazy on the on on, on the detail <laughs> And I literally did not. I was like, okay, Steve, yeah, I won't go crazy on the detail. And then literally, this is like one of the most detailed things I've ever done in my life. You're like, he, Steve, you had he, no idea how detailed I could have been. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and then like, so we started doing the book together and every page I would hand in, because I didn't do the, that, that, eight, yeah. that giant spread that was like, that took a month or so. So it was like almost when the book was done, I handed that in and and he was just like, yeah, okay, like, you don't have to put like all this stuff in the background. Like nobody needs to know, like there's all this stuff in the background going on. He's like, it's probably going to be filled up by word bubbles anyways, which is true. Um, but, um, and then like towards the very end, it was like three quarters through the book was done. I handed him the big double page spread and he just, he was not happy. <laughs> not a happy camper. He was like, how, he goes, and how long do I have to finish this? So, and Steve, works um i don't know if i want to give away his secret if he's told anybody this but he, steve still works with like a mouse yeah, i'm not surprised yeah he doesn't work with like a tablet or anything. yeah the mouse i told him i was like dude get, a, get an ipad and he got it and he was like i don't this shit like yeah. <laughs> it's like i don't i'm not good at it but yeah he still like does all this stuff with like a mouse which it, it, it you get good at something it's like why why change it like if, if you learn how to draw on paper and then into an ipad and so on it makes sense or some sort of you know touch screen yeah device but if you were like used to working with a mouse and I, I understand that like it's definitely old school but i mean that's yeah. but it all just look at his look at the results work, like yeah what? Yes, he's coming up with amazing work, though. Yeah, I mean, his results are actually there. So it's not like it's like, oh, yeah, that guy definitely used Microsoft Paint. We can tell. <laughs> it was a mouse, Microsoft Paint, 8-bit. Well, like, he uses yeah. Photoshop, so there you go. So he, he is, he is he's not painting, but... Um, yes. But well, we yeah, don't know. Maybe he is. He, maybe he is. He's just saying it, just so he doesn't feel, like, you but know, embarrassed. Those names, like Steve Levine and in Jim Lawson, are names that, if you know Turtles, or a yes. broad audience for turtles you know these names but like it's eastman and laird are what people know and so like those people don't like some people the fringe people the people who only watch the movies or the tv shows or anything like that don't realize that like how impactful jim lawson and steve levine were to the comic books for the turtles in history and so 
I just can't imagine. It's like when I talked to Ben Bishop about the idea of working with Kevin Eastman on projects, he's like, yeah, yeah. some days I'm like pinching myself. And then yeah. now, like now he's like, whatever. He's like, it's his best friend. It's Kevin Eastman. Yeah. But like, but like, yeah, at the very beginning, he was like, oh, what are you, what do you, you yeah, want I, me to I, work I, with you? <laughs> I felt the exact same way when Steve was like, you want to do a jam piece? Cause I was yeah. just like, what? Like, I'm just like, and I didn't even have like anything out necessarily. Yeah. I had like some little things I did here and there, but like, nothing really crazy. So like, to me, that was really an honor, like super, mm-hmm. super, like super humbling. And it, and it kind of made me feel like, you know, you get these little, as an artist, you know, I, it, it's, it's a very weird occupation, especially in comics and stuff like that, because, um, you know, somebody, we talked about it once, we were saying it's kind of almost like the, the entertainment industry in the sense of like, you could be really hot in one minute, Yep. And then if you don't do a book for like a couple of years or you don't work on anything, like everyone just forgets you. Like yep. nobody even knows you existed. And, you know, it's funny you see that with people too, because there's like people, you know, you're artist alleys and comics and you see these people and they do something, but then like, you don't see anyone. And don't get me wrong. I mean, they probably go into like character design and yeah. storyboarding because it's way more money and it's, and it's probably, you know, you have probably better deadlines and things like that. But like, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird, but, it, but I, you know, I tell people all the time that like, want to do this, that like, you know, it's one of those things, like if you're, I heard this, this quote once somebody said, you know, if you stick around the club long enough, you'll end up in the band. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is very true. You know, if you're making quality, if you're putting in effort in something and you just stick around long enough, somebody is bound to see it or you're bound to just yeah. like, trip over a, you know, a, a, a bag full of money or something, hopefully, but, but like, but, but, but really, you know, something will, something, something good will come out of it. Yes, absolutely. And I, I mean, I have in my first, I worked for a concert promotion company uh, in 2004, five, six, somewhere around there. And it okay. was just like, I just have to hang out at the place that like I was trying to date a girl that worked there kind yeah. of thing. And I ended up getting a job there and I got my graphic design backward background from there because I started doing things and, and, and so on. So we're learning Photoshop and so on. So I have no awesome. classic training. And from that point on, I went from that to another job, worked for seven years. And then that job led me into another one and to the point where I'm at now. And so it's like, I hang around the club long enough and I was yeah, able to really, get in the door. You were and literally so, hanging around yeah. the club. Yeah. Yeah. And but so no, it's actually, I, yeah. I feel like that is, that is so true. And I feel like, you look at some of these like musicians and stuff now, like I've, um, uh, you know, run the jewels. Yep. I'm a, I was a fan of LP for like in the nineties, like company flow and stuff. Yep. And I was just like, this guy is amazing. Like how come nobody knows who this guy is? Like, he's such a great rapper. He's such a great, you know, and, and I know killer Mike stuff and things like that. But then like when they came out and it just, everyone blew up it's like, Oh, these two like old guys that are rapping, but they're just like phenomenal. It's like, and it's like, when did these guys, what happened? When did these guys like pop up? But I feel like that's like the way it is. Like he's yep. consistently made great albums and great music. And he never like kind of like made crap. It was always really good. And even yep. his, even what he, even like, if you listen to interviews with, that, with him, even his like worst music is still probably yes. better than anything yes. out there. Um, and then he kind of, then they finally made it to the point where they're like, you know, these big superstars, you know what I mean? So, but Massive. I look at that, but I see that in, but I see that in, in, um, in comics, you see that mm-hmm. in comics all the time. You know what I mean? These people getting, getting, have been working on books forever and then something hits or something turns into, somebody notices it and somebody turns it into something or somebody turns it into a game or whatever. And not to say that that's the end game. No, but, stuff, but when people notice quality, you know, it may take a uh, while. Yeah, Paul Eaton and I, uh, Paul Eaton, the owner of Galactic Comics and Collectibles in Bangor, mm-hmm. Maine. Um, we uh, obviously I talked to him a lot. It's my com- local comic book shop, but also we're friends, and he's on the podcast a lot. He's a like, regular guest, and yeah. uh, we were talking variant covers a number of year- like, episodes ago about how what's the benefit, negatives, and so on. Like Saga does not have mm-hmm. a variant cover. Brian K. Vaughn yeah. doesn't like them. He thinks that the artwork should speak for itself. That the A cover is the cover, so on and so forth. But I think the invention of a variant cover, especially a store exclusive variant cover or a specific one that you get, you know, I hire you to a cover for a specific project. 
it's your name is now attached to something that you probably never would have in a hundred years been able to touch. The I was saying back when there was like what hundred covers to the last Ronin number one. Yeah. All those people who got to do covers for those things was like you got to draw turtles for mm-hmm. a Ninja Turtles book that was one of the most popular Ninja Turtle books in years. So you got your name out there. And it's possible that other people out there that we don't know have gotten many more projects and, and work because of a variant cover. And it's oh, really it's cool true. to see all of that out there. And so like, you know, Bob did a variant cover for, it's hard to say, but seven years in darkness for us. Yeah. And hopefully someone sees that and, and, and it, you know, spitballs into something that could potentially, he's working on his own book right now, but like getting more work and so on but and so forth. It, so it's, yeah. it's, it's such huge thing that variant covers to me was like, forget the, money that the comic book stores and publishers are making and forget the, you know, all the other stuff that's involved in it. The idea you're giving artists an opportunity to draw a comic book cover that they may never have been able to draw in their entire lifetime is huge to me. I think it's making comic book artists out of people who just do it for fun or, or, or trying to get into the game. And it's yeah. really cool to see variant covers do that. And that's the thing I was, I was talking to somebody um, this, this weekend at Turficon about how, um, there, there's no right way no. to get it. Like you, 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 I used to think back in the day, like Marvel and DC, like the only way you're going to be a legit creator is if you work for them. You know, this was, this was back when I was an idiot teen, teenage kid, early twenties. And I was going to all these conventions and everyone was just like, and the funny thing was too, is that like, I was really like naive to mm-hmm. the fact of conventions and stuff. I thought these people had to be somebody who was, who the people who were legitimate like creators, like they worked for Image or they worked for yeah. uh, Valiant or something like that. And I didn't really realize that if you, if you just give somebody money, they'll give you a table. <laughs> like that didn't really, I couldn't, I thought it was this prestigious thing because I looked at this industry as something that I, even though I wanted to be in it, I looked at it as if it was something high on this mountain yeah. that I probably couldn't obtain until I got to a point where I was a, a better drafts person or or whatever and um but now like i just tell people i'm like if you got small shows they're always looking for artists they're always looking for an artist alley um so just like and, and whatever if it costs like 100 bucks for a table like and even if you don't make anything you're gonna meet people you're gonna talk to people most of the, like that's how i have gotten my foot in the door is just doing conventions because honestly if you email somebody stuff like that just goes right into the right into the yeah. trash box for the most part, and I'm not and I'm not shitting on anybody or whatever. But like, and I say you shouldn't do it, but just it's it's all like yeah. a very 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 small chance you're gonna get yeah. noticed. I, I still send out email and I still send out like snail mail to people and yeah. stuff like that. But like honestly, if I go to a convention and I go to a booth of a publisher and I say, "Hey, here I am," and I give them some work, um, and they realize that like I'm not like some weirdo or some like you know, butt munch who's going to be yeah. like, hey, I'm, the best, I'm the best artist in Rhode Island. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> best artist in New England. New England. Um, but like, if I do that, like they're going to realize like they can have a rapport with you. They can work with you. Cause most of the time this industry is like, you work with friends, yeah. you work with people that you like. And that's the biggest part of it. I, that's something that I've really taken away from working with, with Joe and Sean and Steve uh, um, on these projects is that like you make the best stuff when you're just working with yeah. them. And of course you're going to have times where things are not going to go in on time and you're going to have little spats about things like that. But at the end of the day, if you guys are kind of all on the same page and kind of eye to eye with with where this thing is going, it's going to come out great. It's going to come out good. You know what I mean? I mean like that's one thing, Joe, Joe, not just, just all yeah. the one thing with the variants. Yeah. Is that that's how I got started. Joe basically saw my work. He saw the stuff that I did with, with Steve. Steve introduced me to Joe. They're doing a book called Murder Hobo. Yeah. And Joe's like, hey, you want to do like a cover for like, uh, I, forgot, I don't know if it was uh, for One Stop or, um, uh, oh, don't, was it Double Midnight? I think it was Double Midnight. I don't know. Possibly. What, I what I'm, but it was, they did like, but they ended up making like a glow in the dark cover for it. Yeah. And it was like this exclusive thing and it was selling online for like crazy money. And I was like, and it was like really cool. But then that got me to do another cover with them, which was a one stop. And then I it kind of springboarded from there to doing Epic Tavern and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, cause Sean kind of saw the art that I was doing. It was like, oh, I got, I got, this is the kind of style we want to go for in our, in our new book. So yeah. So variants definitely have helped me 
as a, as a creator. And I think it's great because I think also like, so if you want that legitimizing your artwork kind of thing, like you were talking about, like if you Marvel or image or all these other people that the only companies you can work for is it puts you in that light. Like if you go to your table and you see, you have a, you know, tales from fantastic crimes you on your table, it's not a book that you created. Like you came up with a thing in the, you know, the idea and all that stuff and made all the work and did all the stuff, but you work on it. And if, even if you just had variant covers on your table um, that show that you would do the work, it's like, Oh, Wait, you did a variant cover for this book, and it's like now yeah. quote unquote legitimizes you, even though yeah, all you did does. was draw on not that all you did, but you drew on a paper for someone else's book. It's not like you created the entire inside of the book. It's literally just the cover. And but we talked about it on the on the on the podcast was that's what sells the comic book to some a lot of people. Yeah, is the cover of a comic book. And so when you walk into a store and you have a badass cover on the on the shelf, you don't sit there and read the whole thing. Guess what? Unlike a proper book like an actual novel there's no synopsis or solicitation on the book so you can't really know what's going on in this book until you either look on the internet ask the comic book store owner but you look at a book and you say fantastic it looks a dope cover i want to buy that and that's 90 percent of the time i buy books is because i look at the shelf and i go oh my gosh that's amazing and sometimes i buy the cover b because the cover b is better than the cover a And, and and that's the variant cover and so variant covers are huge and i think that's one reason why artists get the most credit in the comic book industry is because it is the most visual thing on there is the cover but writers are we wouldn't have comic books without writers so no it's definitely one of those things like a cover is going to bring you in a good story is going to keep you there yeah you know what i mean and so it's one of those things where like you could have a cool looking cover but like honestly like yeah i have scotty young books that like yeah. are like his like, weird venom run yes. that he did. yeah like back in the like 2000s or whatever yep. and it's just like with a stupid freaking logo they changed it to yeah know. and like, there's a whole stretch of time where every book that's ever been out there has had a logo where you're like why did you change it why you did that just keep it yeah keep it keep it keep it the same way a classic way and then they go back to it, you're like oh that's what i wanted Cause, seriously because that's the thing that's going to sell that book is yeah. it's an updated logo yeah. not the cool artwork on the front it's going to be like oh you know what the art looks like crap but you know i really like that font well it's funny because it's like it's the <laughs> early you can tell a lot of these books changed them in like the early 2000s yeah you, they're dated 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 logos and you're just like <laughs> what is going on here but yeah, I mean, it, 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 the books, uh, it's weird how you say it, but judge a book by its cover with a comic book. And that's usually how it is. And here's the deal. I personally think that I've stopped reading more comic books that the writing was bad Yeah. than I have because the artwork was bad. So like one of my favorite books right now, it's hard. I don't know if you see it, but Department of Truth right now, yes. uh, James Tinian's The Force book. I'm not a huge fan. And I've said it on the podcast before of Martin Simmons' artwork. I think it's it's for what he does on the book, it's excellent for that style. Works. I'm just not into that messy, um, almost blurry kind of like abstract look that's in the book. And I'm like, but I, the book is amazing to read. So I've read the book. There's less times that I've actually, more times I say I've read it, I've looked at the book and the artwork's been amazing. And it's like the writer just didn't get what's going on. Yeah. And you stop reading the book. So there is that mixture in things that, again, he's an excellent artist. <laughs> like it's a oh, really yeah, no. good book. It's just, I just don't like it that much. I want to be able to, I think it's me because I can't read as well. Like I took reading classes when I was younger and all that stuff that like, I have to have that connection between the artwork and the, and the writing to know like who's on the page. And when it's what's so messy on? that you can't really understand what's going on on the page. Sometimes I get lost. I'm like, wait, didn't that guy die two pages ago? And so <laughs> that's the thing. And so and that's one of the things that James has always done. I always, but most of his books have artists that are just like the obscure style artists that are yeah. good. And, 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 you know, something's killed in the children has a great artwork style yeah. to it. And it's a little bit it more works. clean. It works with his style. Of yeah. And some, uh, but nice on the, uh, it's like something's killing the children is one thing. And then you have department of truth is another and then nice house on the lake that kind of meets them in the middle. There's like the cleanness yeah. and the messiness all together on it. But that is true. Yes. Yeah. It is. It's like a bridge. It's definitely yes. a bridge between books. I mean, right now he's a he's only a writer and he's one of the greatest writers that's out there right now. So I totally, I totally agree. Yeah. We're not yeah. talking about other other people again. We're talking about Steve Marto, best artist <laughs> in New England. Best artist in in the northeastern. Yes. But we don't have to talk in, about in, you best forever. artist. Who's the best best artist in the northern hemisphere? Best artist in, in the town that you live in on the in the house within the four walls in, of your in house. In the northern hemisphere, yes. I mean, are you a better artist than your and your wife? Uh, my wife can't. No, she doesn't draw. Okay, see, then you're the best artist in the house. There you go. 
I am. Well, that's my, 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 everyone was like, when, when we had our daughter, she yeah. was like, oh, did you going to teach her how to draw? And I was like, no, nah, she doesn't. She doesn't like, she comes in my studio and she plays with yeah. you no know, stuff. And she, she loves this guy. She loves, um, so I have a, an old spawn figure like back in the oh, there you go. old like Yeah. And uh, she just, lo- this thing like could kill, like if you threw this yes. at somebody, yes, you'd hurt somebody really bad. You'd probably bust their eye out or something. The best she part about that is, People always complain about like Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel in her skimpy outfit with like the 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 back side of her suit going up her ass. Yes. Trying to fight in that. Can you imagine trying to fight in that? It's so silly. <laughs> I feel like how would you lift your leg up with that stupid freaking <laughs> like look at the I was look gonna, at the like, boot. Do like an a- I was yeah. gonna try to do like an ass shot, but you can't. There isn't that. But I'm saying look at the boot on his right leg. Like, yeah. how would you even move with that thing on there? Like, I don't Mark, understand. Ask Todd McFarlane. Yeah. On the show, ask him. Todd, there's no does, way. Spawn, it, you know how? what's funny? It's like you know how like they've created, they've done the mathematical equations on that Barbie wouldn't be able to stand up if you used her actual dimensions and, and, and yes. replicated it up. Yeah, it's the same thing like, with way... most superhero characters. They would yeah. not be able to walk or fight crime or anything like that. That's why they're not real. They're animated <laughs> or fake. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so fantastical crimes. You tales on the fantastical crimes. You know, Epic Tavern number one. It's a one shot. Check that out. But you were also, like I said, we can't talk about it, and we won't go into it. We'll just do a top, touch it really quickly. But you're working on some other projects that are pretty cool that should be out in the future. Probably and, 2023. Yeah. And, and the thing about this is, when we talked about it off air, I mean, these are like you mentioned things that won't come to fruition. The stuff you worked on in the past. These are gonna. I mean, these are coming. Like it's, we can't talk about them, but you're gonna see them. Whereas other things you've worked on. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's and that's the great thing about I think like kind of like finding you know I I made this kind of comment to somebody like finding your tribe so to speak, yeah. and um, it it is it's like you you kind of as like a freelance artist and as somebody who kind of you know you know you, you kind of little nomadic and you you have to find gigs and work with people and sometimes mm-hmm. it's not going to be the best and sometimes like i said you, you're you're just a hired hand like you yeah. just basically like some guys are like oh i got everyone has everyone's i had this great script for a movie and i think it'd be great as a comic okay are you saying that because no one wants to make it into a movie and have to go well, to that's, well, listen, well that's a comic like would that. be cool well that's like a big thing like uh i you hear that a lot now you know i was talking me and joe were talking about that like there's a lot of people, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's very talented writers out there that they just can't get stuff made into, into uh, some sort of like movie yeah. or TV thing. But there's all the, there's probably more bad than good. And um, but like everyone's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this into a comic thing. Mm-hmm. And they don't understand that, like, you know, they they I think they don't they don't understand comics because comics is its own animal. Mm-hmm. And and they see somebody draw and they say, Well, that can be done like really quick. yeah yeah and you can turn that around really quick like i mean a, a comic comes out every month right yeah but it's like this it's this manufactured machine you have like all these people working together simultaneously making it happen like it's not just one person who can do it all and do it in like a month or two um and if they can they're basically not sleeping and they don't have a life and then and then the the fact that you're paying them basically less than minimum wage yes. what they're working hourly because it's a flat rate is even more like a, 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 a just just like a slap in the face, and I'm not like crapping on people for taking no. the job because I've taken them, I've taken many of them, um, but I think there comes a point where you kind of use these things as springboards, and if you're smart um, about it, you will. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, like I think with comics, the reason you have to kind of have a little bit of a business sense. I think with just art in general. And that's one of the things like I tell people if they go to art school or whatever, I, I graduated from art school. I have a bachelor's in illustration, which is basically like having a bachelor's in like religion, so to speak. Yeah. Like it's just, it's, it's just not going to, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's going to get you a job if they require a bachelor's degree in anything. Yeah. 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 Basically. Uh, <laughs> like it's like, what it, but anyways, um, but I feel like, you know, uh, with, with the freelance world and making comics and stuff like that um it really is one of these things where you kind of have to eat 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 dirt for a little bit mm-hmm. nobody's going to springboard out there's very 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 few people I, you look at all the people who who come out of art school and all the people who are trying to make art 
and all these people, like literally millions of people every year going into the art field and how many of them really like blow up really quick. Mm-hmm. I can't even count them on one hand. Nope. Everybody else is like, you know, it's a 10 year success. Yeah. It's like, let me tell you, let me tell you about my, my 10 year overnight success. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of what it is. And so, um, but like everyone, but everyone has these scripts to make these comics and stuff yes. like that. And going back to that, um, you know, you, you don't really know if these people are going to make it into something. Like yeah. I've, I've worked on projects and I was really like, I was really pumped for some of these projects. I was like, this is a really great idea. This can, this has legs, this can go somewhere. And then the person who's the writer or whatever they were doing, they just never did anything with it. Like it's a finished book. It's, it's mm-hmm. done, but it never took off or did. Yeah. And you, would, and sometimes I would email these people and they'd go, Oh yeah, we're trying to figure something out with them. It's like, I don't, are you really? I get the, it, you, know? you mentioned that the, the, the bad, there's, there's more bad than good out there. People like there's more like really bad pitches or comics that have been created than there are good comic books that are out there. I mean, we get yeah. weekly, we get messages from people on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter saying, do you review and talk to independent Great. comic book creators? And I said, yes, we'd love to. Like, obviously if we can be any part of the way that you get success and your piece of information or your, your, your book or anything's put out there in the public, I'd love to. But from the beginning, um, I've asked for at least a few pages. I, I honestly would like an issue in PDF sent to me so I can yeah. read your, your work, so I can look at your work and, and understand what you're trying to do. But also I'm, I'm, I am judging you because I am not going to put my word behind in my thing that I've built behind something that I don't believe in. So yeah, I've had more people who have messaged me and say, well, do you do this? And I'm like, yes, we do. And then I'm like, but then I honestly, it's the hardest thing ever. What you just do is you don't respond because telling someone that I don't want to have you on the podcast because your work sucks is, is not easy. And is that why I have I no problem so saying that. To you? I have no problem saying that on the, on the podcast because I have the good majority of those people who reach out to us don't even listen to the podcast yeah. because they're just trying to get all the podcasts out there to talk about stuff. Exactly. And yeah. so I, I have no problem saying that on here. But even if I did, then, then if you didn't hear back from me, it's likely that I didn't like your stuff. And I'm not no problem saying that because I'm here. I'm not going to say it to your face because that's just, I don't want to ruin someone's dream. And, and guess what? They could have sold a thousand copies of their book and they're doing well. Great. Yeah, number of stories that I have a co-host normally Adam who lives in Illinois now and he comes in he goes he goes did you read that book I'm like yeah and he goes we're not talking to them right I'm like no don't worry about that we we're, we can't I we got three pair or three word bubbles in it I'm like what is going on here or yeah. the artwork's just suspect or whatever so there is way more bad than good I love that the artwork is suspect it, it, there's just times awesome. where you're just like that person has two left feet and I don't understand how you got that. Like, how did you get this printed? But well, they, if you look at it, the, 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 there's no editor probably for those books. Yes. Oh, yeah. they, were talking yeah. about they edit themselves. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, that's why like, it's great to have like people like Sean. Sean, yes. Sean is, is not and this thing. Like you got to have kind of like a, like, so a, a really thick skin. Uh, one of the first, I told people this too, if you've ever come by my booth or if you've ever talked to me about comics or whatever, um, it took me a long time to get where I am as an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a lot of people just telling you, like, I've, I've been very, very lucky that the people in my life have been very supportive of me. Yes. And they've been super, like, my, my parents still kind of don't know what I do, like, in a sense. Like, you know, I like, I try to give it to them like in a very blue collar way. I'm like, I'm like a plumber for art. If you need me at my services, you will call me or email me and I will do this for you. Kind of like thing like mm-hmm. that. They really don't understand like, and, and it's true. I have people in my, my, my family that really don't understand. Yeah. What do. you, know, oh, you work for Marvel. Like they, like they think if you work for Marvel, like you just, you work for them forever. And yeah. that's very rare that somebody does that. But, um, but I tell people, you know, uh, some of the first critiques I ever got, you got to have a thick skin because some of the mm-hmm. critiques you're going to get, people are just going to shit on you. And right, and in some cases for me, rightfully so, because it did suck and it wasn't good. And, and, it, and I had to work my way up and, and cut my teeth and, and like anything else. So, you know, when you have somebody, a younger guy come up to you or a younger person come up and they show you the work, 
I first of all, I don't try to be I don't want to be a jerk to them because no. I think that's that's awful too. Because I've had people come up that I go to shows when I was younger and they would just be like absolute d bags and 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 I and I get it like some people just just having a bad day at a con or something like yeah. that. Yeah, but but I mean like you don't have to be that way to somebody. Someone you know else I mean? could be in their life. Like it doesn't have yeah. to be you. Like it's not like they, they might be really happy to see that you. I mean, you're not going to make the comic book with them. So it's like. Yeah. And that's my whole point. Like, you don't want to be um, American Idol where this <laughs> person's family, yeah. like, you know, if you if you drew something, your, your your family around you should tell you it's crap. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I, I not that in those words, but like, they should say, oh, that's good. Maybe it needs a little work. But the number of people where someone's like, my mom says I'm the greatest singer in the world. I'm like, well, your mom lied to you. Okay. Yeah. So let's just be honest there. Like your mom lied to you your entire life. <laughs> and she let you go so far. To let you that, be on yeah, national is, television and yeah. have someone else tell you that you're horrible. So, well, well that's that's what we, me and my wife were talking about. That we were saying like, and the thing is too is that we we're saying like, even if you get your dream, even if you get yes. that dream job or that dream gig or whatever it is that you're doing, and you really see how much work goes into it, you most people, and I'm not saying this to be like like I have this like like crazy stamina for all this stuff, but like you probably wouldn't want to do it because yes. it's a lot of work. Like comics is a freaking ton of work. You're drawing everything. Like when you go to do like a thing, like, like design or like yep. even illustration, I've worked illustration. You do like a quarter of the work and get paid like triple for an illust for an illustrate for something that's yeah. illustrated. Whereas you have to draw people talking, you have to draw yep. cars, you have to draw spaceships, you have to draw monsters, you have to draw children, you have to draw blah, 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 everything. To do all that stuff, that takes a that's a lot of time and a lot of yes. effort. Especially if you want it to look quality, if you want it to yes. have it quality. Yes. So that's why, like, when people come out with comics and they're good and people shit on them or whatever, or they say they're not good or whatever, like, I'm, I don't, I'm not in that. Yeah. I'm not in that in that camp of of, of crapping on people because I know what goes into it. Even movies and stuff, like you said, movies and TV yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I may not like it. It might actually be a literally crappy show, but. You know, yeah. You work on it. You work hard on it. It's your project. It is what it is, and it's, it's the thing. It's like and again, I, I'm not saying that someone shouldn't tell someone this person's thing. It's just not my. I I don't have enough time in my life to tell this other person to say this is not good to everybody who messages me and says yeah. Do you want to review my comic book or whatever and so on. But like, there's just time and a place. But, and but, space but there is. Them. But there is, like you said, there is like some people. There are some yeah. people who just literally they are like naive to it or they just mm -hmm. like dumb <laughs> hate to sound blunt but they're just yeah. kind of like dumb no and it is understand that even if you put like 20 years of work into this you're probably not gonna do well or, or just like your ideas like for some ideas it just they're not good well yeah and we we joke here about you being the greatest artist in new england yeah. and all that stuff and i'm joking i there's I can't count the number of people who are better are. artists than myself. There are, can't count the people. You probably can't count the people in your hands. They're better artists than you. There's oh, just, yeah. there is those people. And so we're not naive to the point where we know we're not the best at it, but we're also know, and I know in my industry that I've seen cans of beer on the shelf in a store and been like, who said, okay to that? Yeah. Like, who said that was a good can to put out there for yeah. customers to buy that they're going to like what you see on that can. That artwork is horrible. The letters are blurry. Everything, you know, someone approved blurry this. like my face. On the yes. And oh. so it's the same thing with you. You probably see that too. You've seen it on the internet. You've seen a drawing or something. Or you First of all, you've seen that's you're passing that off as yours, even though it's someone else's. That's the first you see. The other things you see is just crappy things that you just, someone said, okay, you. And, and, and it's funny to see that. You know how hard it is to work at, at, a, at a comic book. You know it is. And that's why you're saying that everybody deserves something uh, and, and when you work that hard and you complete a project, I mean, I'm going to give Bob, uh, a, a shit for the rest of his life because he's still not done with good boy pause. Like, let's yes. do this, man. Let's get on this. Now. Um, <laughs> it's only one issue, man. Like, where are you doing? And he's very detail oriented like yourself too, though. Like he's to the point where like, he's drawing like each individual brick on the sidewalk. Yeah. And, Bob's, and, Bob's crazy. Bob's, I love, I love. Bob. And then he Bob's broke his crazy. hand and all this yeah. other crap. So like, yeah, I'm giving well, Bob shit. Like, he's had a really, he's had this weird, like, Yes, like year where everything was just all over the place for him. Well, he so was supposed to be on my podcast a couple of months ago, or a month ago, to talk about the the variant cover, and then mm -hmm. he texted me that day and was like, "Oh, by the way, I can't because my landlord's showing my apartment during the time that we're supposed to be recording." I was like, "Okay, cool." And then he like had to move and all that shit down too. So 
he's going to come on and I, I think it's next week and talk with Paul about that. So we're getting him back on. He was on that's, a number that's of the other months thing ago. too. Wife, wife. Yes. Issues. I think that's yeah. another reason too why I haven't gotten probably some of the more, you know, bigger gigs and stuff like yeah. that is just because like, you know, when we had my, my daughter, one of us, my, my wife has a, a, a pretty decent job and stuff like that. So um, it would absolutely, it would be stupid for us to be like, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to be, you know, yeah. the guy that that's doing the breadwinning stuff when I, it's so in, you know, up and down. Yeah. Um, especially with like healthcare and crap like that. It's, it's it's like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Adult stuff. Adult. So bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like, like why do you have to like, get so adult and like down? I know, why so a adult about geek my... podcast? Like, yeah. just, come on, we're talking about <laughs> fake things here, and you're talking about health here and shit. Like, come on, <laughs> that's 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 how it works. Um, but no, but yeah, but like stuff like that, life will just hit you with mm-hmm. stuff, and and I and I get that, and I and I understand that, and I think that that's one of those things that you know, you know, if you're if you're lucky enough to have very supportive people around you, and to kind of have you know where you can kind of like. Mm-hmm work on work on your comics like i mean there was one point where i was uh, there was one point i don't even know how i did it like i had my daughter i was taking care of her during the day i was teaching like a comic book class in providence where i'm near at night and then i actually i literally i had to go back and get like a part-time job at night so i was literally working like at night five days a week yep taking care of my daughter during the day and then when i get home at like 11 o'clock 10 o'clock at night i'd start working on my comics and I get done at like three o'clock in the morning and then my daughter would be up at like, you know, six o'clock. Yep. So I was just like a zombie for like two, three years. And um, like, but that is also one of those things you kind of learn from it. You learn from it and you kind of make sure it kind of gives you that. That's another thing. It gives you thick skin. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I got to be a little bit better at maybe finding better gigs or upping my prices or doing what I got to do and, and to kind of, offset this stuff so i'm not gonna like die at 40 you know what i mean <laughs> of but, just like sleep, yeah sleep apnea, you know what I mean? like just uh, but well, it's, um, it's it is not to like to, 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 if anybody's like 17 18 years old right now thinking they want to be a comic book artist it, it work at it do it and again we go, yeah. let's go full circle here and go quickly as we end this up is kevin smith one of the things he's always said about, and one of the reasons why we started the podcast in the first place was, oh, you want to start a podcast? Just do it. Get yeah. the equipment, start recording, put some episodes out and just do it. And it's the same thing with any piece of creative thing that's out there mm-hmm. is if you want to, if you're passionate about comic book art and you want to do it, get some paper, draw some shit, draw Spider-Man, draw these other ones that you know, the the, the characters and then create your own and do these things. Yeah. And, and if you see people like Steve or Joe or Ben or any of these people at Comic Cons, some of these are like, go up there and talk to these people. And I'm not going to try to not get sales for you. You don't have to buy anything. Just talk to these people. Think yeah. about it. But but also support these people the because too, like, this is know, the thing. <laughs> you don't know who these people are too. Like yeah. you could be talking to the next, you know, yes, Rod McFarlane. Yeah, you, you never, you know, you know, you never know who, who you're going to talk to. And the thing is too, I I had this whole thing where like you look at an industry or something like that, whether it's music or whether it's yep. making movies or television or whatever, and you kind of put these people on pedestals. And the funny thing is, is that they're just like you. They had to do the stress, yes. same struggles, but the only thing that makes them different from you is that they stuck it out or they are working a little harder than you at mm-hmm. whatever you're doing. Yep. So you just kind of got to up that game and be, just be a little more smarter about stuff. And, you know, you'll, you'll get there. You know what I mean? So like if anybody's out there that does want to do comics or whatever, man it's it's and now is like a really great time to be doing yes. comics it's yes. one of the best times in history to be in, in the history of the media to be doing it because you have internet access to people are doing webtoons they're doing digital comics they're doing kickstarters they're doing patreons you know support patreon i wrote a whole piece recently uh i just came out actually i think came out today on the, on the website about supporting uh artists and creators via things like Patreon and Substack and things like yeah. creator owned alternatives like Ben's Bishard Kids Club is mm-hmm. is there's a piece there where you're trying to get a return on your investment where there's like $5 a month and you're trying to get what they give you for your $5 a month. But yeah. then there's also a piece where I have like three or four that I'm paying like three or $4 a month for that I'm literally just like, I listen to your podcast or I read your stuff 
And this is my way to support you in a way that like, maybe like there's things like I listen to podcasts as a friend of ours who does a podcast called the friends from work and they're a Marvel cinematic universe podcast. Mm -hmm. And they have a four dollars and 99 cent thing that has bonus content and you get the episodes early. I very rarely listen to bonus content and I always, I never listen to it early. It's literally yeah. $5 a month to support them because I believe in what they're doing. And this yeah. is how they're basically, this is how they're, they're, they're further along than we are. So hopefully at some point I'll be able to do that and quit my job and be able to do this for a living. And yeah. that's the thing. And so like some of these people, like these Patreons and things like that, like support them. You can't support them all because we're not all rich. Like, let's be honest when you're paying for comic books and collectibles and other yeah. shit, you don't have money to spend on other stuff too, but there's certain ones to pick at. And I wrote an article about like which one to support, like fit your budget. Obviously look for the best value in some of these things. I mean, Schmalky's mm -hmm. seven years in darkness one has been awesome. 10 yeah. bucks a month. And it gives, he sent, he sent me this no extra charge, a t-shirt. He puts, and that's the thing too. Like we were talking about before, like, you know, like, like, like Ben and Joe, they, they yep. put out, they give you quality stuff. It's not like they're just like, you know, drawing something on like a loose piece yes. of paper and being like, here you go, here's your sketch for the month. They're like doing really good stuff. And I think that's what it is too. A lot of people, they kind of like are trying to put it over on you mm -hmm. and they're like, well, you're paying 20 bucks a month and this is what you're going to get for 20 bucks. Like yeah. yes. you want to kind of give that, give the customer or the people who are supporting you a little more. And um, yeah, I, I, I try to do that. Like at cons, I, I always try to, you know, give something extra away or yep. give them a mini comic when they buy a comic or if they buy a print, I'll throw a comic in there yep. because I just feel like, you know, that's the thing too. Like you said, it gets expensive. Yes, it does. Buying it, comics it, it, and all stuff, it gets yeah. very expensive. So, so for somebody to give you a little bit more, I think is a little bit, I know for me personally, that's what I would want. Yes. Well, I think it's so funny. I was like, just to, quickly finish up here so we've been talking for a while here it's not that we i could talk to you forever but just saying we should probably <laughs> wrap this up we'll have to do this but, again. We'll definitely do this but again. scotty young just sent a newsletter so i was back a year ago roughly a year ago substack was released or substack's been around for a while but substack mm -hmm. did their whole investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in millions of dollars into comic book artists and creators by backing them with hundreds of thousands of dollars to join substack yeah and then release newsletters digital comic books whatever on their platform. And so when that came out, me being a huge Scotty Young fan, I was like, you know what? I'll join his big one. I, I don't have really the money to spend on it, but I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to pick one, it's going to be Scotty. I'm going to spend $300 for the entire year, but it's the boss level and you get free stuff and you get all this. So it's yeah. this thing where I was like, cool. And I can talk about this now because he just sent a newsletter out today to all the people saying it didn't work. Basically, and they're not using the, he didn't say it didn't work, but he's basically saying that he cr got hundreds of subscribers to sign up at the beginning. But basically, since September of last year, he's gone, added a few subscribers and dropped a few subscribers and added. So he's stayed at the same level for and he's added new things and tried new things and so on that it just wasn't working. So as of today, the level subscriber that I was for the past year is no longer in existence um, that he can't you can't renew this year for that. And that his other newsletter and comic books that he's releasing digitally on there is free. That if you want to subscribe to the monthly subscription, you can. It's more of a tip jar thing. It's more of a yeah, supporting exactly. the artist. Yeah. And he says it's just he was all the work he was trying to do to get more subscribers to his content was taking away time from doing commissions and doing yep. other artwork and doing other writing and all that stuff. And he says it's just not working. And so I had a conversation with David Harper, who runs the off panel podcast and sketch.com last mm -hmm. week. And I mentioned that there's some of them like what's the obligation to these artists who are charged or creators they're charging you $300 for a year to give you anything for that $300 more than the five bucks a month that they're charging everybody else mm -hmm. and there really isn't anything except for the fact that if they don't fulfill their promise I'm no longer gonna be a Scotty Young fan and that's not yeah. good for him so yeah. so in a sense uh, so they're gonna give us the stuff that's free that we're supposed to get we haven't got any of it yet in November because he's releasing new comic books in November and the free stuff is surrounded, surrounded that new comic book. In November. He's actually going to send it. He's going to drive up to your house and yes, just exactly. like, drop it off because you spent so much money yes. on it. Exactly. Like, I feel but, so bad. And he just like gives it to and you. So there's, is this thing that I spent a bunch of money on. They, they know that likely most people who spent the money on it can't really afford to spend the money on it. And, and he's it. honest about it. He's like, it just didn't work. We're going to fulfill our promises, but I'm not going to do it next year. And I don't know if, I don't know if the dominoes will fall and other people will follow suit. I know the guys from Three Worlds, Three Moons, uh, mm -hmm. Hickman, Huddleston, and, and Del Mundo. Like, that's their thing right now. Like, they're not yeah. focused on anything else. That's what they're doing, and they're doing covers and, and things here and there. But, like, they're created this 
concept universe on Substack. So like they're not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, a genius Tinian just is a superhuman. So I don't know how he's, he's just probably going to do it forever as well. Cause he's a superhuman. <laughs> um, but I heard this confusion about Jeff Lemire, like his stuff has also, no one's communicated back on the stuff he was supposed to give away. Really? So, so again, I think it's just like, all of a sudden yeah. I know where they were thrust into this. I need to do a bunch of stuff and we don't have time and effort. And you realize that you just mentioned you have three hours of sleep a day and you're adding all this extra stuff to do it. Yeah. So we'll see. But like I said, some of these local, more local ones, they, they feel almost an obligation. They feel bad. And so I asked David, who runs off panel and he has a $5 a month thing for off panel and he charges his website. I'm like, what do you feel your obligation is to us as the, as the subscribers? And he goes, I feel horrible, horrible. If I go a week without <laughs> posting something on there, like horrible, like yeah. you paid something and you're yeah. not getting it. So, but some prob- people just don't care. Some people no. are just looking at it. Like, this is a money grab. I, you know, whatever. Like you, like you see that, you see that at, at, at conventions, like you yes. can pay somebody to do a sketch for you and, it's like the very end of the convention yeah. and they're just like banging out something quick for you. And you just gave them like $500. Yes. Yeah. And you're getting, and you're literally getting like a 15 minute, 20 minute sketch or something like that. Like yeah. to me, that's kind of, that's a huge slap in the face to, to a person. And that's, and that's how you're going to not get people to follow you. Anymore. Yes. And that's the thing. So like, I, there's a mixture between the two of them. So I wrote this whole piece on like, which, how to choose them and what to do in the different, different platforms that are out there. Cause the major ones right now are, Substack for the bigger people and then like mm-hmm. Patreon and then like create our own things too, like Ben's Fish Art Kids Club and yeah. Kevin Eastman has his fan club and stuff like that. So there's these other ones that they just use their own uh, software and they use like Discord to communicate with you and stuff like that, which is what Ben does. And uh, I mean, Ben's boxes that come out every quarter, there's way more yeah. value in that what you paid for. Like the, he's still making money on it, but like the stuff you get out of there, like one of a kind things that you'll never get anywhere else is worth the subscription. Well, that's the so. thing. The other, the other thing is too, when you're, when you're like machines, like they are, yes. like they just pump out work all the time, you know, you're to, to them, like I can understand that because mm-hmm. to them, they just are doing so much stuff that they can, you know, if you're constantly making a page a day, or you're constantly making a cover a day, or you're doing something like if you're doing that 30 days a week and you're just like banging out, even like yeah. 20, and you're, that means you're banging out like 20, 25 pieces a week. Mm-hmm whether it's a cover or interior yeah. art or just doodling or whatever, you can easily just like make a poster of that or something like that. And to, and, and to you, it might be like, well, I did this thing and it's whatever, but to a fan, they might just, they might be drooling over it. So like, it's, it's weird. Yeah. You don't know what, what some people, but just to like go over that, just to put an extra cherry on top, I think is just uh, it, it shows a lot about how much the person does care about the fan. Yeah and and how much they actually do care about you know making content that's that's quality too yep and i think it helped during the pandemic where there's like your connection to the cost to your to your consumers to your readers to your art mm-hmm. visual people that read your, look at your art is cons and we didn't have those like your yeah. physical com- uh, conversation that you had like i saw you at bangor comic and toy con like just conversation with people that's your thing and yeah. so i think during the pandemic a lot of these like discords that ben has in the patreon were for schmuck it's a way to have to communicate with the other your, your fans and your readers well, well that's it it's it's, it's, to- it's like i said comics is this weird animal because honestly like where else do you get to like i mean now you do the thing with like you know you have the media star you have like yes. hollywood stars but even that you can't just like sit with them at a table at their booth they got a handler and the guy's like no we gotta shuffling you along like, okay yeah, photos yeah, go yeah. yeah yeah like that's why i feel bad for like some of these people like when they do these shows or whatever and you meet like the superstar but like you spend all this money you get a signature but you can't even talk to the guy for like two minutes because yep. they're like kicking you out they're like you know but what like but that's the thing that's great and that's what i love honestly about shows is that i get as we have gathered from this whole podcast is yes. i love to talk so <laughs> both of us do. That's the reason why we can talk for this long, but like the best things you can do. And this, we kind of, again, full circle with the topic called cons is local, yeah. small cons are honestly some of the best places you can ever yes. meet the future or the past of the mm-hmm. comic book industry. And so I met George Perez again, that he was more of a paid guest that like had his big booth in a long line, but like Arthur Soydam, who did the Marvel zombies uh, yeah, variants yeah. and stuff like that. I bet him, he was an unbelievable person to talk to. One of my favorite people I've ever met at a con, the same con was uh, Jim Steranko talking about the old school Marvel days with Stan Lee and like, you know, all these other things. Uh, and they're making a living basically off of that now, like I mentioned before. Yeah. So seeing them, but they're sitting there going, you know what? You bought one of those uh, uh, prints? Cool. I'll sign anything you want. And, and yeah. you know, let's have a conversation. I'll tell you stories about 
the old Marvel days, or I'll tell you stories about making Marvel zombies. And, and so that's like the, the, what comic cons used to be. And I still think it's the most amazing thing about comic cons is the meeting the artists and creators of comics, not saying that to draw away from, I mean, nowadays with pop culture, the way it is, you have to have your movie stars there. You you just can't not do it with movie stars. It is possible for your small, like independent one day Saturdays at a comic book store or a small place in Mm -hmm. New Hampshire doing artists only or creators. If if you're renting out a huge venue, you have to make that money back. So if you have one or two big celebrities or whatever, I totally get that. That's, that's what you have. Honestly, I think your best experience you're going to get at that event, even if you want to go get that thing signed by someone, like I met Roger Jackson, and got the VHS tape of Scream sign. He did the That's voice awesome. of a of um a ghost face. Yeah, ghost but like face. the the best thing there was talking with you and Ben Goldsmith and Schmalky and, and Sean French and even uh, Tony Fleece uh, Fleece was there uh, yeah, and yeah. Bob. Like those are the kind of things. Those are the memories I brought out of the whole weekend. I mean, I didn't take a picture with with other people. I took a picture with you guys. Like it's like that's the. The fun things I want to remember uh, at the cons and being there, and it will be a little bit different when we move. The con moves from Bangor Comic and Toy Con goes into the arena because it's I really a bit, I can't wait. I can't. It's wait. fun, I'm, but it's gonna be a little I'm bit so, different environment because yeah. it's a little bit more rules and things like that. But like, I think there's, I think it'll be really awesome though. To be yes. honest, like I'm super pumped for that because like I think that's such a ve- that that venue and like where it's gonna be. It's you like you need it. There really isn't like besides like Rhode Island, but like yeah. Rhode Island really. And besides Fan Expo in Rhode Island, there's really nothing I think that is kind of that middle ground. Yeah. Of like having a really good show that's still quality, so have good art, good artists and uh, people there. So, and I think I think it's gonna work out. But yeah. If Maine can have Maine Comic and Toy Con and Granite gets to New Hampshire and you got like Fan Expo in Massachusetts and Wicked mm-hmm. Wicked Boston hurts pretty good too. So Wicked Boston. Yeah, I I, I heard great things about yeah. it. I didn't know, but and yeah. Rhode Island, and then you have Terrific Con. Like each state can have their own thing. I don't know what happens in Vermont, but they'll probably do something in Vermont. I don't know what it's like Vermont. Vermont yeah, hip, hippies right. and, and, and it's yeah, it's <laughs> hippie. hippie, fest. Con. Uh, hippie yeah. Con. Hippie con. Uh, but this, uh, there's something somewhat big in each state for everybody. And it's, it's, it's transportable for most of us. Like you can easily come up not easily, but you can come up to Portland or you can go to, you know, Manchester or Boston or, 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 or you know, he can sign like it's, it's, you're going away from you for most of them, but like, if someone who lives in Massachusetts or, or Southern Maine is a local artist, they have a little bit ability to go everywhere or, or yeah. fan. Um, it's great for New England. I think it's a, it's a you don't have to go to New, uh, the New York Comic Con. Yeah, I think like I'm, go to, I think we're very lucky to to be where we are because like if you're out in like you know Nebraska or something, where the hell are you gonna go? Like you know, like what do you? Well, that's like, where Scotty Young no, lives. No, I think no, he lives no, in he lives no. in like Kansas not, or something like that. Not crapping on people from Nebraska. I'm sure they're very nice, but um, like. <laughs> comic-con wise or like doing a a show like that like what are you really gonna do and like you know new england you just like you're you're like me i'm a couple hours away from new york and i'm an hour away from boston so it's just and then like even you guys i'm only like you know three hours away that's really not a huge no trip you know what i mean so like it just it just works out that we 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 have that little that that accessibility to all these like kind of like yes in the and swamp. we live in New England so we're like a thirty minute drive is nothing for most of us so well like, well, when, well when you live in Rhode Island a twenty minute drive because we're so spoiled everything yes. is so, we're so small well twenty minutes you're at the end of the, out of, out of, out of the state. yeah everyone's like oh if you go to Massachusetts you got to pack a pack a lunch or something yes, like that. you get exactly. like, you overnight idea you're overnighting but yeah but anyways. Yeah, I mean, so uh, this is like the, the the whole podcast is just talking comics and doing all this cool stuff, but like cons, supporting artists, but like I'm, I'm super pumped about the, the, the Epic Tavern book for you and I'm pumped about what's coming in the future. Uh, I think that the poster you made for the Bangor comic at Twicon was amazing, even though they somehow put it in the back room somewhere and, <laughs> and didn't put it out. Um, those are all... It's all great. And I'm looking forward to what's coming. Uh, and, and you and I had talked back at the Comic-Con about getting on this. And that was right. What was it, April? And so yeah. we finally did this, but you'll be on again. And then, like I said, we're trying to focus in. I like talking to more local people than some bigger people. I mean, David Harper from the podcast is from Alaska. So that was fun that's trying great. to communicate yeah. timing. <laughs> it's always oh, fun to try right. to communicate yeah, when like, time what is, is. Yeah, what is yeah. that? It's like the exactly. next day or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> what, what, are you, He's like doing a it, podcast. That like, like, it's like, it's like you're your Monday at like 12 yes. o'clock. Well, it was just, funny because he came up to the next Saturday at like he came up to the podcast morning. and he's sitting down and he's like, ah, he's like, you could tell he just woke up. <laughs> I'm like, 
it's 12 30 man what's going exactly. on he goes it's 8 30 here man I don't know you're talking about. and he's like and he's like i have had i it's nothing but night here yes exactly or it's been all day all day yeah, it's like, all just wired like, because that must yeah. be freaky imagine oh. that. Like, that must that would freak me out i was in a uh, in uh iceland uh in the summer of 17 and it it basically was dark from like 11 p.m to 1 a.m and it wasn't even dark it was like dusk and the rest of it was just light and it was the weirdest thing to like come out of a bar after having a few drinks and be like oh my god it must be six o'clock in the afternoon and it's like oh it's 10 30 that's weird (laughs) this is really weird but that's crazy um stevemardo.com yes and steve mardo art on instagram twitter uh facebook and you don't have Space, Epic Tavern Space. available on your website, but you <laughs> have you, Epic Tavern is not available on your website, but you can get it at Scout's website, right? You can get it at Scout's, but I'm going to actually um, uh, probably this week, um, depending on when this comes out, yeah. I'll probably have some some stuff on there. I'll probably be doing yeah. like some remarks and having them up on my shop, which okay. is uh, Steve Marto Art at BigCartel.com. Okay. And um, I'll probably, I'm going to be putting up a lot more stuff on there in the next couple months. Um, I'm probably also going to be, um, I'm trying to think what I'm, what I'm working on now. I mean, I'm working on projects, but like stuff that I really can't, yeah, really can't talk too much about. But um, but if you follow your social media, you'll hear about it. Exactly, follow my social media, you will hear about it. And uh, when's the next con you're doing? Um, I'm doing actually uh, my hometown Necronomicon. Necronomicon. Okay. It's going to be August 18th through the 21st. It's going to be like if you're a Lovecraft fan or mm-hmm. into monsters and cosmic space horror. It's a really great show. And if you're in the mm-hmm. area, uh, come on by. They do like a really crazy, like there's like they have like this thing called like the 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 prayer brunch for Cthulhu. Like, yeah, they'll like they're like sacrificing people. Nice. Like is, I mean, is Schmalky going to this? Cause like seems like a right up his alley. <laughs> it is, it is. I guess oh, I guess yeah. he couldn't, but yeah, yeah. This they, they they do some crazy stuff. And then after that, I'm gonna be doing um SPX. In September, which yep. sadly is the same week as Granite. That's Granite Con. Guys, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be I'll be crucified. Which is which? Where is SPX? It's in DC. Yeah, so Basically, that's not like that bad to me. It's like a big independent comic expo, and it's kind of tough to get into. Um, but I mean, but even that though, it's not that bad because I've always tried to think of like, why does someone schedule the same thing on the same weekend? But Washington DC versus New Hampshire is different. <laughs> like I, I can oh. understand someone doing like. Boxborough, Massachusetts, and Manchester, yeah. New Hampshire on the same weekend. It's like, shouldn't you guys be communicating with each other and not pulling from each other? But yeah, but DC I mean, is different. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of far away, and I'll yeah. probably, you know, uh, get lost or something. I'll end up in like Nebraska. I'll end up in Nebraska. Nebraska. Wow. At, I think, at, at over, sort of I think we overshot period. this. <laughs> <laughs> and I took I'll a plane. I don't some, know what the hell's going I'll on. I'll How do we land? At some, uh, uh, what are those? T- uh, I'll end up at some sort of like a uh, Circle K in Nebraska. Yeah. And I'll be like, this isn't the con. You're just like, hey, I, I overshot DC, but do you have a six foot table? Can I just set up and sell some comics and things, sign some books? Is it okay yeah. with you? Oh yeah, that's I'll what, be like, I'll be like, I'll be, know. That's I'll be the, in Nebraska that's, at the only Circle the, K. I'll be near the, I'll be near the, I'll, I'll be near the St. Pauli girl. Yes, and, 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 uh, that's the uh, the level that Steve has gotten to now where he's doing signings at Circle K's in Nebraska. <laughs> So he's, Actually, he's making he it, guys. He's almost yeah. there. He's almost, almost he's, there. Yeah, the, you've the, done the, signings at a mall. Yeah. So now you're doing signings at a, at a, a, a working your way up to Circle K. Maybe you'll get the Quick Stop in New Jersey. The, I don't yeah, know. Yes. The, the 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 meth head walking out of the restroom will be like, "You're almost there, kid." Yes. You're almost <laughs> Can there, I take a photo with you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a light. My photo is not on the internet, so no. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah. So you don't know. I don't yeah, exist. This is all fake. This exactly. is a CGI. This is not even actually real to Steve. Um, but yeah, so I'm a I'm a buy, his, buy his shit. Make sure that he doesn't actually have to get a day job or night job. Um, yeah, anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. You know, um, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, actually, I'm actually thinking about a Patreon. I really am because there's, there's, I, hear, I hear nothing but great things about it. And, and even if it's just like something that I can throw stuff out to people every month and just give them something cool. I love making like little weird posters and stuff like that for people. So um, well, I mean, like, to me, another... it's the five ten dollar mark is always one of those ones that like I asked Ben. So Ben's number one uh, Fish Art Kids Club subscriber, basically, he got, he estimated was the twenty five dollars a month. But that's mm-hmm. you get like this quarterly box, so seventy five dollars every quarter, you get like a ton of shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Whereas like Schmalky's, I think number one is the $10 a month thing, which is basically, I mean, you get something every quarter, but it's like a comic book or a t-shirt or something. It's not like you get a hundred dollars of the stuff you get, yeah. you pay for it. Um, but like there's five dollars. He does a $5 a month one where you don't get that stuff, but you get all the articles and the digital comic mm-hmm. books and all that stuff. So five bucks a month to me is like a, what, a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. And so yeah. to me, it's like you can, or, or one less book. I mean, not that I want to pull from a, a LCS, but like maybe it's one less book on your pull list to help yeah. support a comic book artist and get stuff still from it. Well, that's the um, thing, depending on the book, if it's, if it's a book that you're kind of like, you were going to just kind of yeah. put aside anyways, like you might as well just throw it into somebody else's pocket who's making good content. So, and you'll get, uh, maybe and, you'll get a comic book digital, digitally from you on a Patreon, or you'll yeah. say, Hey, guess what? If you're a subscriber, come to a page and I'll do a quick remark on your book for you for free because you're a Patreon subscriber. Things like that are really cool. And I think it adds value. And I think it's really, I, I don't think, and here's the deal. Maybe I'll do Schmelke's for a year or two and then I'm stopping and I'll move over to someone else. Like it's, it's just, yeah. it rotates out. Maybe he'll stop doing it because he's done with seven years in dark. Well, I'm sure I'll well, be seven, know, eight years. Know, yeah, it's going to be a seven. So he, that, that's, a, that, that's, the, that's the great marketing behind Joe. It's like, well, for seven years, I got you. Yeah. If you really like the book for seven years, I got yeah. you. And, but, and, but, it's, and, but it's great but he puts yes. out quality stuff like i said it's not like and i can't see joe joe seems like the type of person where he would never just like call it in no you know what i mean like he's always gonna make something cool he's always gonna make something over the top he's always gonna kind of do something different and that's one of the great things about working with him and stuff like that well i mean that- his ash can for seven years in darkness was printed a specific way only that one printer in new england does yeah is Ash yeah, I know, like, I know. Like, that's what I'm you, saying. Like, like that's that's the thing that's great. Like that working with these guys yeah. and knowing them is that like you see this stuff that's going on and you, they they're very great. They have a good business mind to them. Yes. And a lot of artists tend we tend to be very like myself included. We tend to be very you know meek about ourselves, and I think it's because some of us can do this so easily, and the, and not a lot. And you know that's the thing. Like we can do it easily, but the rest of the world who isn't an artist or who isn't in in uh comics or whatever yeah necessarily can't no yeah and i think we kind of don't and i'm not saying that like we're trying to be better than people or we're trying to like put one over on people but i feel like um i feel like there there, there is a worth to that that yeah. we overlook um for, from our own insecurities Mm-hmm. And uh, you see, now I'm getting into like psychological shit. Yeah, see, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll do that next, okay, next well, time. <laughs> next time on Capes and Tights podcast with Steve Martin, yeah. we talk um, healthcare and insecurities and other stuff. We'll, we'll go I'll on to other things chair. too. I'll set up a chair and we can, and we'll just like, I'll lay We'll take phone stuff. calls. Yeah, we'll take phone calls. It'll be like free. Air your grievances to uh, Steve Martin here on. Only three ninety nine on Patreon. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I really absolutely. So make sure you, make sure you follow Steve on on social media. Check his website out. Uh, he is not the best artist in New England, but he might be the shortest artist in New England. <laughs>